Good morning and welcome to the Modus Super Series. It's Thursday morning, which means the beginning of Group C. And it also gives us the opportunity to answer that age-old question. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's Chris Mason with me <laughs> up here on the balcony. Looking ahead to 15 fantastic matches. But before we do that, let's recap what we saw yesterday. It was the conclusion of Group A. And here's Chris Murphy with all the highlights. The Modus Super Series two-year birthday bash saw plenty of party games, but only one seat at finals night would be available when the music stopped. Gary Stafford and John Nelson knew they would not be winning any prizes, but would try to be party poopers for the contenders. Welshman Sam Kankett also had his moments, but he will join that duo on the card for Group C today. So how about Housen? Well, he popped the book for his bottle with sparkling shots like this, but ultimately his slow start on Monday had left him with too much work to do. Lee Cox kept on winning game after game, but passed the parcel to Robert Thornton at the end of the day. The Scott, though, almost gave up the gift, but will be present at finals night after topping the group on legs difference. In case you didn't know, Chris Murphy was trying to do some birthday references in that highlights package. Chris Mason alongside me up here on the balcony. Dramatic group, but one probably where it was rightful Robert got the win. Yeah, he fell over the line in the end, but was pushed hard by Lee Cox and Richie House. And, and yeah, just about the right winner for me. He showed yesterday whereabouts his game is with those back-to-back -back 102 averages. And just about the right winner. Well, this is the table in Group A following the conclusion of 15 matches. As you can see, Thornton and Cox both level on 22 points. And Richie Housen there on, on 18, perhaps unlucky not to go on to win the group himself when you consider the consistency that he had, especially over the course of Tuesday and Wednesday. Yeah, he was, he was rock solid. I think he, he, I mean, he was one of the players alongside Gary Stafford who came in late, uh, got the call up late on Sunday. So, you know, he gets a pass from me for Monday where he dropped a couple of points that... Probably could have been the difference between him winning that group, but looks in good nick, and it's going to be a danger in Group B tonight, as will Lee Cox, of course. Well, let's have a look then at the numbers throughout the course of Group A. As I say, we saw real high quality in and amongst it. We saw 253 legs played, 87 maximums. It really is above par. Sam Kankit with a 10 and, and the highest checkout as well of 154. And Lee Cox, well, when it was highest winning average day by day by day, it was always him who kept coming up with it. Yeah, uh, until yesterday. Um, but yeah, Monday and Tuesday, Monday set a, a personal best high here at the Super Series of that 103.66. But he backed it up with another ton plus average on Tuesday. And Sam Kankit there just showing what he's got in the locker with the lowest leg of the week at a 10 and, and the highest finish. So that, that should give him a lot of confidence coming into today. We're going to see Lee Cox and Richie Housen as a part of our Group B action. That is tonight from 10 o'clock here on Sporty Stuff TV. But today is all about the beginning of Group C. And my goodness, we're looking forward to this lineup. Aren't <laughs> yeah, we? it's a real tasty group. Just by nature of, of uh, Neil and Chaz with, uh, having travel problems at the weekend, uh, unable to play in Group A where they were originally put. And yeah, it's made this Group C a little bit tasty. And we're going to remember it's only the top two from this group that will join Robert Thornton on Saturday night. So we're going to lose some good players. Most certainly, as I say, Neil Duff and Chaz Barsa, the headline acts in terms of this particular group. This is the bookmaker's odds then for Group C this week. And, well, Matt Clark comes in 9-4. to four. He was within a leg of picking up the £20,000 pot here last time out. Yeah, and that should give him a lot of confidence. It wasn't that long ago, and, yeah, we're into a new series, of course. That was, that was Series 2. Uh, I like Neil Duff at 5-2, to two, to be honest. I think that's, uh, that's quite a big price. Most certainly. Let's see then what Aces Acker is providing us with then today. It's a threefold accumulator worth around about six to one, just over six to one. Just talk us through a couple of those selections there. Yeah, I think looking at the numbers and especially Neil Duff, what he's posted prior and, and his, uh, his form coming into this, I think minus 1.5 is the way to go there. Again, Nelson against Barstow. I think Barstow's form is at a different level than what we've seen from Nelson, although it's a, it's a fresh start for him and, and Gary. Uh, and then Kankit Clark, most 180s. Kankit 7 to 4. We know mm -hmm. already this week that he hits a lot of 180s. Most certainly. Well, just before we get the action underway, well, 
it was so good yesterday, we're going to bring it back, the tungsten teaser. It was just once upon a time, a little segment and skit in the commentary. Now it has its own <laughs> place in the show. It's even it's got its own graphic. Well, this is today's tungsten teaser. Can you name the 14 players who have competed in the Modus Super Series and have also been ranked in the PDC's top 10. There are 14 there that you need to pick out. And we also, for a little bit of a bonus Brucey point, which one of those was previously ranked as the PDC's world number one? That's, mm, that's, that's good. Well, it's, it's certainly not me. Uh, and it's certainly not me. Uh, 11, I think, was the highest I ever got to. But yeah, that's a, that's a great teaser. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and have a go at that myself. So we missed off a one at the bottom yeah. there, is what you're saying. We should have done top 12. We should have done <laughs> top 12. Or top 11. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we're about to get the action underway. It's going to see Chaz Barstow in action against Sam Kanker. It's a Thursday morning of darting delights here at the Moda Super Series. On the stage now as well, our referee is Paul Hinks, the legend of the game. That is the governor. The governor. The 127 and game man, and at 9.37, well, it's game on. Thank you very much, Henry, and I can actually answer that question. The former PDC world number one, of course, PDC standing for Personal Darts Club, and it's me. I'm Chris Murphy. Thanks for joining us for the action here in Group C, where Sam Kankitz... 29-year-old from Pontypool in Wales, Super Sam, is looking to build on a, a decent campaign in Group A that kind of fell away a little bit. He was looking like a contender, became a middleman in the group, and he meets Chaz Barstow. First leg is Chaz to throw first. Made it Game off one. the island now, and made it back to another one here in Portsmouth. The Winchester race, who has been, and uh, we've been reflecting 93. all week, Mace, on the progression, the growth of this event. He's been somewhere that's been there from pretty much the start himself. Yeah, absolutely. 45. One of the originals. And a player who, when he's on his game, so easy to watch. And one makes the game 40. look so easy. Certainly one of the favourites to come through this Group C and 100. potentially win the week. I was just sort of trying to work out who we could end up with on Saturday night, and it could be one of our best lineups. ups And you can be here. If you fancy coming along, doors open at 6.30. Play gets underway at 7.30. It's completely free. 96. Head over to dartshop.tv and reserve your ticket. Fifty-eight. And uh, seventy-six. After twelve. One hundred and forty. Chelsea Pressure on it now. Seventy-six. Yeah, look at the twenties. Now does he? He goes downstairs. That first start 56. well out of the way. But Samuel as Carl, Chris said, there is plenty of pressure from Kankit here. Now the double. 100. Ooh, just caught the flight on the Can't way in. Car 20. It looked a bit awkward, didn't it? Double 10 then for Barstow, and he gets first, first blood Barstow. in the first match of the morning. Yeah, Chaz Barstow really was one of the first players that really rubber-stamped how much this Second leg Sam to throw first. Super Series live league, as it was then, can help a player. And it was almost like a, a showpiece match, wasn't it, when 41. he played a full season in Southampton with much success and ended up then playing Michael Van Gerwen on the Ali Pali stage at the end of that year. Yeah, exactly. And he 81. put down the, the qualifying pretty much down to playing in the then live league. Well, it is our, our birthday and we've been 41. having modus memories, hashtag. What's, what's Murph's favourite memories? Yeah, that's a, an interesting question I've been asked uh, by the production crew a couple of times. There are a few things that uh, spring to mind. Now, one of them is uh, just to make sure I make it one through the rest of the day unscathed is Chris Mason winning <laughs> on that stage. But it was some story, I have to say. It really did capture the imagination and got really widespread coverage, that, didn't it? Uh, but other things like 
Little little strange Manley and Jenkins playing on the stage. It was a rubbish One match, but you couldn't take your eyes off it. No, it was uh, it was special. Well, that one eighty ninety nine, especially Sunday with Manley's mind games. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And Jenkins played ball as well. It was real good fun. I got the the inside story on that from Andy later on. Uh, basically, it was that man Jenkins had all day in the practice room so how he was going to beat him four nil, and then Manley won the first leg, <laughs> <laughs> and that set it off. Well, Barstow won the first leg here. Kankit looking to cancel Thunder it out. Thunderbar 40. And big, big pressure on the tops. Great 140 from Barstow. Game shot on the second leg. No problem Sam for Kankit. A 180 in the leg and a 17 dart hold. Both players will feel like they're in this one. What did you make of Sam Kankit in Group A? Because the on. facts really are that he was a contender until sort of the middle part of Tuesday, but ended up 10 points off the top. Yeah, I think it was it was one of those type of groups that was dominated really by the by the top three, and you end up feeling like you're chasing, and there's there's nothing worse because 66. You then start not only looking at the points situation, you look at the the legs difference, and I think that's where. It, experience really plays its part 59. in this format. I have to say, one of the other top moments, you have to say that the finals night winners, because it's been a completely another level, hasn't it? Winning a Champions Week 100. here on the 13-week cycle, £20,000. Conan White had been the first, but in particular, Raymond Smith winning and then handing his darts to the young lad in the crowd, yes. Mackenzie, who comes here every week. Well, I, th I think the fact that you could see the the raw emotion and and it was a big gamble. It was a it was a it was a big 36. big financial Judge gamble for him to you know he was already over here anyway when he competed to 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 qualify for Champions Week, but to then come back over some seven or eight weeks later. Yeah, it's not like Chaz driving from Winchester every no. day, is it? It's a little bit different financially and yeah, it was I physically, think, mentally. I, I think he said with with flights and accommodation, it was it was around about three thousand pounds. So Chaz, your car, it was 70. a huge risk, but that gamble more than paid off for him. Pick a side. 50. Went down the middle. Can't get not in the leg at all. Yeah, so you're looking at. I mean, the players are paid a. A fee, a daily appearance fee, but you're looking at on those numbers. If you d if he didn't make the well, grand final, he's break even, and he needed to make the final to be in profit and to uh, make real profit, win the whole event, which he did. Yeah, that's no score. Someone said Samuel to me it's forty forty thousand Aussie dollars, wasn't it? Well, Charles Barstow was half up the way around the world in this leg, but now Kankit could steal it. And Game does. Shot on the third leg. Call Sam the police. Kankit. An act of robbery here at the Super Series. An incredible turn of events in that leg. Four Barstow Sam was on 70. First. Game on. Kankit was on 299. <laughs> 59. Four darts and a double. For Chaz. 57. Forty-four. That's why he finds himself. Two on down. Not how you start, it's how you finish. Absolutely. Never truer word spoken than in this sport. One out of them, 40. Charles Master was the 4 to 9 favourite. Sam was quoted at 13 to 8. One out of them, 40. Giving Barstow plenty to think about here. 66. Was this one I didn't. Uh, sorry for not paying attention, Chris. Was this one part of your race as Acker? Thought you might have gone high on the 180 count in this match. No, I try to avoid 140 early game, a bit like the early kickoff. Yeah, don't do the early kickoff. Yeah, leave them waiting. 140, chance you've got 80. So yeah, this, this game was always going to produce 180s. 
We've seen a couple in the match Seven already. Barstow is trying Carl to hunt them down whenever possible, even when he might be better switching. But again, he's missed a dart at double. And Kankit is looking to pick his pocket and Green does. On the and every time Sam he has missed doubles, he has been severely punished. That's three on the spin for Kankit. If they chance to throw first, game on. Charles is averaging 90.66 to Sam's 87.53. Tidy enough for well, 9.45 in the morning. <laughs> 95. It is, but Charles will certainly feel that this scoreline should be reversed. Yes. Yes, for sure. 83. But again, that's where there are players like Charles Barstow, aren't they, Chris? And, and there are you can multiply it at the elite level. It will be 100. absolutely fine in the scoring in any match they play, but where the rustiness shows is on the outer ring. Yeah, it's a... Uh, I, I often refer to it as... 101. As a, as an, as a heavyweight boxer. The, the last thing they lose is, is their ability to punch. They might... Uh, 46. Lose the ability to finish or hold a shot. And that's very much like darts. The, the players that are... Experienced 59. players will always score. They just get found out on the outer ring. Treble would leave a finish. 52. Not quite sure what happened there. I think that one come out of the hand. A little early. Oh, that's a great dart. Great adjustment. One out of and a great 40. one, 40. It's his fifth. Did have it confirmed that yesterday our referee took a couple of darts. Yeah. They weren't thrown badly. They bounced 40, out of the Chester board and happened 67. to hit him. Should say that. Both Robert Thornton. 50 left. Just in the single. 27. And that probably made him worry a little bit about the double. Well, one from nine on the outer ring for Barstow. And it could be costly. And it, it is costly. Great so finishing. Get from Sam Kankit, 57.14% on the doubles, four from seven, an average of 87.71, 87.62, the average for Barstow, but that match was lost on those numbers, 11% on doubles, just one from nine. Up next, the current WDF world champion, Neil Duff takes on Gary Stafford.
Welcome back to the Moda Super Series. High quality opening game to kick off proceedings as Sam Kankit got the better of Chaz Barstow by four legs to one. Eight missed doubles costing Barstow in the end. Wires for Kankit 87.71 average and four out of seven on the outer ring. Next up for us, it is the debut for the week of the reigning WDF world champion Neil Duff. He takes on Gary Stafford, watched by Chris and Chris. Thank you very much, Henry. Yes, Neil Duff making his bow this week at the Super Series. And what a a clash it could be. What a potential finals night final we could have between the w WDF world champion and, of course, the world seniors champion if Duff were to take on Thornton in the grand finale. But Gary Stafford almost prevented the Scotsman's progress at the end of yesterday. And Duff, I think, is just having a little, uh, a little word with Henry on the balcony there. I don't think he said anything to upset him, but all smiles on the face of the Northern Irishman. Yes, Stafford missed three darts against Robert Thornton, including one at the end of a 1-2-6 checkout in the last leg that would have actually sent Lee Cox through. Yeah, two darts at tops, one at double first six and for 1-2-6. Game on. Yeah, Thornton in absolute ribbons in that. And Lee Cox. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. He was sort of stood behind the curtain there, just peering behind, like watching a horror movie that he didn't really want to see. But it's all reset back to normal. Thornton's got his feet up, I'm sure, watching the action. As he does, he does watch us here at the Super Series when he's not in it. Morning, Roberts. 55. Maybe no doubt having a cup of tea with his feet up. Watching everybody go through the ringer. Yeah, what is it, haggis on toast, something like that? <laughs> I did ask him yesterday, especially the way he started. What on earth did he have for breakfast? And he said, porridge. Give me some of that. Ah, the old Scottish Quaker oats, yeah. That does make sense. What this is some day? start. By Neil Duff, who was certainly on the shortlist to not only qualify out of this Group C, but potentially in the week. 126. Well, I didn't, didn't need to go for it, but... Yeah. 91. <laughs> well, he played the percentages, did the right shot, and then missed the big number. Fortunately for him, Stafford back on 245, so... An opportunity to come Neil back and right the wrongs. It would have been a rude awakening for Stafford, wouldn't it, having missed that checkout the very last darts he threw yesterday. Yeah. He can't leave, or doesn't leave a finish, and Duff doesn't hit the double, but it shouldn't matter. ADC qualifier follows this one. John Nelson he is facing Superman. 66, Neil Lucas, 16. No score. 16. Gabriel Khan, 96. <laughs> well, that is an enormous pull, wasn't it, from Neil well, Duff? We've seen Kankit pick the pocket of Chaz, but this would be larceny on a grand scale. 78. Neil Lucas, 16. It was that 16. bad a dart from Duff. I had to look at his reaction to make sure it wasn't <laughs> that he'd gone for the wrong double. Double, double 16, yeah. Double 8, Neil. There Here we, we go. go. The first leg. <laughs> Neil Duff. Bang in the middle. Eventually gets the hold. And again, your opening game is always a bit of a bit of nerves. Something like Gary did through the first practice game in the on. world, but it's not until you go up there you sort of get a feel of where your form is. And you'll be certainly happy with the scoring phase of the leg with a sixty six. A max in there. Yeah, it feels like it's becoming a bit of a chore for Gary Stafford as well. He, he played the first time he appeared 38. here. Fantastic on his first day, but we haven't seen any of it since. He lost the chance to qualify from Group C on the Friday, having, I think, won four out of his five games on the Thursday. 100. And he sort of struggled through Group A this week with just moments of what he can do. Yeah, I mean, technically, it looks very good. The fundamentals are there. The action looks 82. nice. It reminds me a little bit of John Walton. I think what makes it appear sort of like a chore is his demeanour, that, that reaction yep. there that we see to any bad dart. 81. 
Well, I spent a good half an hour in with the the lads early this morning as they were preparing and just sort of just watching them 60. practice and go through their routines. And the throw's no different for Gary in the practice room. And it may be just a, 58. a bit of nerves may get to him. I'm not sure, but he's a very laid-back character. I say that fundamentally there's absolutely nothing wrong with the throw at all. 80. I'm not exactly sure who officially replaced who, but of course Duff was due to play earlier in the week, and Gary Stafford, one of the players who had to, to ring his boss 58. and say he can have another three days yeah. off with immediate effects. Yeah, we never really mentioned the employers, but... 100. Thankfully, they're 100 very accommodating to our players. Where's he going? Treble 18? No, stayed there. I'm not sure. I'm just... 64. I sort of get it. The but... other car, 141. One thing that bothers me is he's not been able to follow. Yeah, I think if I... Uh... 89. That's my boss for three days off. He'd say have as many days off as you like, pal. Forty-two for thirty-two on the wire. Fifty-eight. The Inside, car, outside. Well, Neil Duff shake it all about. Tops. Well, it's almost the same story as the first match at the moment. Forty-two. But this Gary time, Duff. Sixteen. Just struggling on the doubles. He's now missed five. Stafford himself has missed four. Game shot on the second leg. Gary Stafford. Starts, but doubles between them. Both one from six. That's one of those real frustrating legs. Good leg, Neil, to throw first. Game on. So I say to yourself, how am I having 21 darts in a leg and not winning it? 60. Neil Duff's next game against Sam Kanki after that. Clash between John Nelson and Superman, Matt Clark. So we've got Superman, Super Sam, 140. and Duffman <laughs> all in the group. 85. Not actually sure on nicknames for Nelson, Stafford, and Barstow. Isn't Barstow the Prince? Oh, yeah, the Prince of Winchester, yeah, because... 135. The royal connections there. Yeah, good. Good memory. Surely Gary should be something like the Staffy. Trying to get his teeth into this one. 100. And there are loads of obvious suggestions for Nelson, aren't there? But we'll, we'll leave him to that. He goes into battle next. 100. <laughs> Took me a while there. Took me. Took me a second. Double session day 85. today and Got tomorrow, of course. 126. Real marathon of darts today with Premier League tonight as well. That will be just coming to a conclusion as we go on air at 10 o'clock. Well, last time I was sat here, Premier League night, two weeks ago, Matthew Edgar asked me who I thought would win the... 86. Premier League night and who would win the UK Open and I said right I'm going to say it's going to be someone called Michael and if they win the Premier League they'll also win the UK Open I was that close wow. dart away damn you Andrew Gilding a dart away from doing the double well, both of these have had double trouble pinch one Six or a ten. Big target to aim at. Tops. In. Are you shot on the third leg. Neil Duff. I'll make him feel a whole lot better. Yeah, finally a bit of sort of authority from Neil Duff there. Just no nonsense finish. For the first time in the match, they've been faffing well, around in that department. First. Game on. Yeah, and I was, I was speaking to Neil this morning, and he pretty much has watched every dart just to get a feel for the for who he'll be potentially playing 100. in this group. 
I'm sure he will feel this is a game that he should dominate, but it's not quite going well, that way at the moment. 25. Yeah, I like the group, but looking at it, if anyone were to ask me, uh, I'd be saying Neil Duff and one other to get through. I'm not quite sure that Chaz Barstow at the moment is at the 81. same standard as he was maybe a year ago. No, I agree. And looking at his stats so far this year, that would certainly be One the case. Get a second max from the Duff man. Yeah, I think it's... I, I, I think the, the big four would be, as you say, Duff, Barstow, Clark, and Kankit. Yeah, Clark, probably the dark horse for me. Yes. It seems strange because 25. he was running up in the last one, series. But yeah, only losing out by a leg, wasn't it? He almost didn't even make it to the finals night of his week. Needed a 4-0 a win to do that and got it. With a 1-5-6 checkout as well. And didn't know he needed the 4-0 win. Yeah. Incredible story. 45. Matt Clark from Kent. Actually, Gary Stafford more. In the Clark Kent mould, isn't he, when you look at him? 85. Gary Ocarn, 95. Bit of pressure on the 95 to hold. Should be going ball. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not a fan. 39. Neil Ocarn, 86. High risk. That was low reward. 54 leaves 32. And the good doubling continue. Game shot yeah, of the there fourth you go. leg. Neil Duff. Punishes, for me, a mistake. Stafford. Yeah, 95. Like Neil, through the first. Game on. Well, in, in a short race, I understand if it's a real long, a long race, a race to 10, and you're in the early stages and you want to go aggressive, but... 85. In a, in a race to 4-2 on down, and... Potentially, you're going to get your throw broke. You've got to have a dart at the ball. Well, well bull's a shot, isn't it? And the other, the other thing that fascinates me on that route is it's very rare when anyone goes for treble 100. 20. Now, if you hit the treble 20, you can split and leave a double of your choice. If you hit the uh, single 20, you've still got 25 bull as a bailout shot where on that 95 route, it had to be perfect on the double-double. Double. So, yeah, well, uh, especially, especially when you're one from nine on doubles, if you're pinning doubles all over the shop, then you could make a case for it. But Yeah, and, and it's 95. awkward, isn't it? I mean, look, we all know that all the doubles are the same size and all that, but Gary Stafford's a tall fella and going down for a, a low double. And then you've got to go all the way back up. 180! That's a third for Neil Duff, starting to move through the gears. Yeah, he's found his feet, hasn't he, here? And Stafford is sinking quickly in the quicksand. 100. Well, the, the new 96. players coming in are coming in cold as well. So Brilliant. 78. Well, better there than placed inside. Didn't want to start messing around. You might even split it when he comes back. Yeah, could well do, depending how low Stafford goes. 140. And he'll go straight at it. That's game the plan. Shot and the match, Neil Duff. And he executes it. And he just warmed up as the game went on there, Neil Duff. Slow start, shaky on the doubles to start with, but ends up at north of 33%. Four out of 12 there. Gary Stafford, one out of nine. That will have to improve. Three maximums from the Duff man. And a strong start to his campaign in this group, matching the result of Sam Kankett in the first match. It's over to you, Matt Clark and John Nelson. That's next.
Welcome back to the Moda Super Series where it was world class from the WDF world champion Neil Duff getting the better of Gary Stafford 4-1 with an 88 average, three maximums and 33% when it came to the outer ring. A really good start from the man from Northern Ireland. Next up for us is Matt Clark, the man who was within a leg of winning the title last time out. He takes on our ADC qualifier for the week in John Nelson being watched by Mace and Murph. Cheers, Henry. Yeah, Matt Clark back in action after that brilliant run to the final beaten by Raymond Smith, a match we were talking about earlier on in one of our hashtag modus memories. 54-year-old living now in Walkton in Lancashire, but originally from Kent, hence the Superman mantle. John Nelson, the ADC qualifier from the London and South East region, and has he's had a couple of moments. I mean, he's beaten Robert Thornton twice this week, so... No mug. Very nearly beat him for a, th a third time as well. Interestingly, I actually did notice that he uses uh, original Bristos by the look of it, the cocked fingered type. Fetch a fortune, you know, on eBay, man. Collectors are all over them. What they are originally played with. Yeah, I saw a set first of those, leg uh, is Matt to throw first. Game on. The, the darts that John Lowe hit a nine dart with on eBay as well once. Twice. Three times. A lady. <laughs> a perfect start for Clark. Picking up where he left off last time. 121. That would have been a dream start to the campaign. No, they're not. 58. It's interesting. I'm, I don't recall him using a, a gold dart, but there you go. One thing we have been doing this week is it's been a, 85. a special landmark week for us is just celebrating the uh, the history of each day. And we do have a couple of significant 93. darting dates today. The birth of Big Cliff Lazarenko. Happy birthday, Big Cliff. And also a player that we're very familiar with here at the Super Series in the Hammer, Andy Hamilton. Happy birthday, Andy. 57. Player we've had here multiple times. And the Tungsten teaser today. 55. Regarding the players inside the, or have been inside the world's top 10 in the PDC rankings. In the past, Andy Hamilton, one of those. There's one of the 14. 94. Yeah. Actually, a nine darter on his birthday 10 years ago today, Andy Hamilton. Knowledge. What a birthday present. Yeah, brilliant. Mario Carl, brilliant mind. Google's great, isn't it? Well, what kind of answer will come up here? Matt Clark looking for another. Well, you did me up like a kipper yesterday. I didn't even. I, didn't, I can remember lo losing in one final in 2008, but I didn't remember losing in three. And the yeah, I was surprised you got to three as well, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> the, the one that haunts me. What are the names? Felix McBrerity one. The cat. Hope you're well, pal. Yeah, he's always one of those. Uh, Starts quiz questions, yes. isn't he, that nobody has the answer to. <clears throat> Clark, has he got the answer here? Double eight. Yeah, he's shown he the has. first leg. Matt Clark. Holds his throw in the first leg. Yeah, great max from Nelson. All in vain in the end. An 18 dart hold for Clark to get this one underway. Second leg, John, to throw first. Would you say that Game was on. your sort of PDC heyday that, that around that period? Yeah, I think that's where I... I think that's where I was. I got to number 54. eleven, and I'd have to have I'd have to have a quick check. But then it went to a. I was I was spoke of potentially getting a a Premier League spot, but I think they around that time they changed the rankings to a a two year system, 16. and sort of almost overnight I went from eleven to eighteen with the changes, and then I got up as far as sixteen. Ninety five. Of course, running into a. A certain Mr. Taylor every weekend put paid to me 
getting any higher really. I think that was all right. I think it was. I'd have to check. Yeah, that system has evolved. Yeah, I think it's something um, we'll talk about. I know you chat about these things a lot, and we share some similar opinions. But it's probably the ranking system in the best place it's ever been, but still not perfect. No. One hundred. I, I, I think. I think with the the vast money available to the worlds, and the fact that you can hold on to that money for twenty three months and three hundred and sixty four days is ninety three. It is a little ambiguous. And, and I think both, and I think it works both ways as well for the players that can't catch you, but also for the player that's holding that amount of money. A player would go, and I think Robert Thornton actually is a good example. One hundred. I think he went from something like fifth in the world to eighteenth overnight. Yeah. And and I think that's I think that's too much of a a, a drop. But I think if it was on a, a yearly ranking system, it would be. Or if they did something like some other sports do, where you kind of ranking. John you start losing the money gradually as soon as you earn it. Yeah. Yeah, maybe, yeah. I mean, it's one of those things. Most of the, the things we discuss, there's no Michael real Carl perfect Wall solution. So, you know, like I say, some would favour one one way. and I think the current system, you get these massive reshuffles, don't you, in the yes. rankings, whereas that would be more of a steady decline and incline for players. Well, Adrian Lewis is one, and, and Gary Anderson another that, you know, almost within a month, they've, they've gone inside the top 62. 10 to outside the top 20. Good dart. Double 10. This has been a little bit of a theme for John Nelson Mark this Lugano's week. Well, he either pins it yeah. instantly or, or doesn't get it at all. Yeah, if it was an F1 driver, he'd either win the race or crash out on the first bend, wouldn't he? That's yes. kind of way it's been for him. Game shot on the second the first leg. two laps. Clark. Led by Clark. Yeah, rock solid stuff from Matt Clark at the moment. 18 and 17. Two out of three on the doubles. Third leg, Matt, to throw first. Game on. Steady away in terms of the scoring. But it's enough. Yeah, not to uh, typecast any darts player, but he is the imperial plodder, isn't he, Matt Clark? He just 80. does his own thing in his own time. And yeah, if he was a snooker player, he'd be Cliff Thorburn, yeah. wouldn't he? <clears throat> just grinds away. Gets results. 59. Yeah, he's tough to beat. I had a battle with him back in the day at the in the embassy. One hundred and one. Just uh, going back to on this day, that day that Hamilton ten years ago hit a nine dart on his birthday. One hundred. Robert Thornton actually reached the semi-finals of that Pro Tour event. That was in the days of the UK Open qualifiers, and I mean, this is how long ago it was. Paul Nicholson reached the quarters. <laughs> he did used to be all right, you know. Forty-three. Fine player, major winner, of course, the Players' Championship at the Tavern. 60. Just reading down the list, I mean, the top two, the, the two finalists were Michael Van Gogh and Michael Smith. Peter Wright, the other semi-finalist, but losing quarter-finalist, Mervyn King, who's still around, of course, John Park, three-time world champion, and Nicholson and Justin Pipe, who at that time was one of the top one players on tour. Yeah, sure was. Is he not playing darts at all now, Justin nope. Pipe? No. Nope. Completely. One hundred. Well, he, he never Mario quite Carl recovered from that cheating accusation, uh, accusations, did he? And that I thought was well, it left a bad taste in my mouth. But there you go. Pardon the pun, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there were a couple of things with Pipe, weren't there? There was that, there was the 59. fact that he, he kind of resigned himself to the fact that he would never be selected for the Premier League, and I think that and was and tough he, to take. Yeah, yeah. Because he certainly made a case for a selection. 60. Matt Ducar, 78. Well, Matt Clark is making a case to join the conversation as not just one of the players that might qualify, but 
to be the man to beat in this group. Double 12, double 6 for 3 0. Composes himself. A little twizzle in 66. his hand that is Johnny synonymous with his throat. Can't take it out, but Nelson on a wing and a prayer here. Into the treble. Awkward. Oh, what a dart. Ball. 97. Great effort. Mario Kart 12. Whistled past the wire. But this for three zip. Missed the ball for a 170 in Group A, did Nelson? Oh, that would have been the full Nelson. Double six. And to double three. Can he make an adjustment? Six. John Newcar, 25. The choices here. One from three on the doubles, just gets the nine. Game shot on the third this time, leg. John Nelson. Finds a double with his final dart to close the gap to one, and it is an important break back. Fourth leg, John to third first. Game on. But it's amazing that when we look back over the years, that the churn of players in this sport that were right up there. I think what's happening 42. now is we're not going to forget about as many players because they'll come and play in things like the Moda Super Series. Well, and that perfect example is today's tungsten teaser of the 14 players that have played in the Super Series that were former top 10s. Yeah. So 14 of them. He says, given away that it wasn't him because of course mentioned a, a high of 11. Of course, was much higher than that in the BDO before the the move to the PDC. Yeah, on the back of eighty-five. Uh, the part of reaching the Masters semi and then the World semi. It was about referees yesterday, wasn't it? And uh, one hundred and forty. We saw another one of them in today. Paul Hinks, legendary referee. Absolutely. He is going to be here for the rest of the 59. week if anyone thought we were sort of marking the occasion by having a different ref every day. Almost has like a cult following now, doesn't he? Paul Hinks. Yeah, he told me that he was uh, he was refing a, a Royal Mail darts event. Yes. 100. Uh, annual thing that they do and he really enjoyed that. And they really respected him. He also did the varsity event, didn't he? 140. Nottingham Muni. Yeah, now that is... That's lively. Adam Warner was telling us last time he was here that University Darts is basically everybody shouting miss when you're throwing and all that, and they, and they love it. They come up... They 140! The players that have had a, a grounding in that would be absolutely fine in the Premier League, let me tell you that. Well, that's that's where Adam Warner started playing his darts and he's gone on to Mark win a 92. tour card. I think he qualified for one of the Euro tours as well recently, didn't he? But yeah, I've watched the uh, I've watched that online uh, on YouTube the university varsity matches, and yeah, they're they're proper lively. That's he might work his way back into this. Seventy-seven. It looked like Clark was in complete control, had the chance to be three 0 up, but suddenly seventy-seven points away, and now fifty-eight. And now 40 from parity. 57, Matt Ucar, 40. Got one there, Superman. Nelson was almost his kryptonite. I'm shaking his head. He knows he had the opportunity. Matt Clark, though, not 30. over the line John in the Ucar, leg, 20. and it's more chances for Nelson. Nine darts missed at a double in four legs. No darts at a double in shot the fourth leg. every John one of Nelson. them. And it's Nelson who does level with that hold. Two's apiece. Sam can get like Neil Duff to first. Game on. Follows this one. Then Nelson returns to take on Chaz Barster before Clark clashes with Gary Stafford. If you've been watching us all week. Just a reminder that this is a two-day group, so a 10-match race between the players, and it means a, a decent start is vital, really. 44. 
Very rare anybody loses the first couple of matches and manages to bounce back. No, and and especially with a with a group like this where you feel the the bottom two or three in this this particular group. If you drop points to them, it may prove costly. He just woke up, hasn't he, Nelson? All of a sudden. Well, that's been a that's been a theme. I mean, at times he's looked absolutely brilliant. And that's his second one eighty in the match. Eighty one. And he's getting Matt Clark at it here. And again. One hundred and forty. And really has picked it up. Picked up the pace a little bit as well. I don't know if he was caught in Clark's pace a little bit at the start of the game. Easily done. That's precarious. 138. Yeah, John Carr, 137. Switched over to the 54. I didn't want to run the risk of knocking a dart out. 40. Mike Ricard, 122. Four 18s and ball. Six eighteens, double seven. Stay there. Ninety, 90 leaves thirty-two. Pressure on the ninety-seven. Almost identical averages. Eighty-two, eighty-two for Clark. Eighty-two, twenty-seven Nelson. Forty-seven. Now that's an thirty-two. Having missed the treble ninety, maybe the double-double was the best option. Bigger targets. Yep. And your opponent on 32. Game shot on the fifth leg. This time. Matt Clark. Wins it in one, despite the max in the leg from Nelson. Didn't get a dart at a double. Six leg John to throw first. Game on. Ninety-six. Decent career he's had, I think. It always sounds sort of disrespectful to use this word, but it's meant just with sort of accuracy in mind, journeyman. One out of them, Clark, he's never been yeah, somebody. He's been, a, he's been a good pro. Yeah. Won a couple of Challenge Tour titles, 2014 and 2015. Won a couple of ranking titles in 45. the BDO w, WDF system. Nine years apart, actually. 1999 in Canada and 2008 in Holland. Always difficult to sort of work out how good some of those wins are because you get 58. such a mix of players at those events where if you look at the PDC, you generally know that most of the best players in the world have been in them. Yeah, it's like a very compressed field, isn't it, of, of quality, especially nowadays that it's limited 42. to the just the 128 tour card holders. We're back in the day. When I won my first ranking title, Scottish Open, there was 1,089 players in it. And it was all played to a winner in one day. He does have a couple of nine darters to his name as well, Matt Clark. If he looks for a, a perfect visit here. 139. Uh, interestingly, one in Gibraltar and one in the European Tour qualifier for Gibraltar, but in different years. Wow. 85. Matt Ricard, 164. Of course, talking of... Massive fields. The the biggest one of all is is the Dutch Open, which is just it's it's a mind red. blowing experience. But if you're a if you're a darts fan, it's certainly one you should have on your bucket list to attend. It is fascinating. And the organisation is remarkable. One hundred and thirty three. It has to Mark be, doesn't it? Sixty four. Sixty four for Clark to put an end to this one. He. Had control of the match. Probably should have led it 3-0. Nelson woke up. Now he's gone back to sleep. And Clark's Game taken advantage. It's a 4-2 win for Superman. To get off to a good start. 4-1 wins for Neil Duff and Sam Kankit. Followed by a 4-2 success for Clark. Average in the mid-80s. A 64 checkout that won it. The highest of the match. Two maximums for Nelson. Who again showed flashes but not for a sustained enough period to pick up the points. We'll return after the break 
when Sam Kankit takes on Neil Duff. Hello again, everyone. Welcome back to the Moda Super Series where Matt Clark has rounded off the first round of fixtures of a 4-2 win against John Nelson, doing so with a solid 85 average and 30% on the doubles. So then round two does begin now and it sees Sam Kankit in action up against Neil Duff, watched by Chris Mason and Chris Murphy. Thanks, Henry. Well, one win apiece so far today. It was a 4-1 win. Sam Kankit, a surprise win. Considering Barstow was the 4 to 9 favourite, well, he won that tight. 4 1 with some lovely finishing. 4 from 7. Neil Duff got it right in the end, but missed a fair few doubles. Did it 3 1 8. had a 4 1 win as well over Gary Stafford. Averaged 88.06. The average for Sam, 87.71. So if they play to type, this could well be a tight one, Murph. Yeah, and probably one of the matches, maybe even the first match, that will tell us a lot about who is the main contender in this group. Sam Kankit has the advantage of obviously having played first three days Sam already. First. And was the best of the rest. Come on. In terms of being the top of the trio, qualifying for Group C. And Neil Duff very much fancied to progress. I think you, you called it right with Clark. 59. Barstow, Duff and Kankit as the main four. Well, Kankit's already proved himself against Barstow. If he can beat Neil Duff here, then maybe you have to start thinking about him as a, a real top two contender. Absolutely. Because you know that forty three Duff's not going to drop too many points. And even even this early, Barstow's put himself on the back foot slightly, and he'll have to respond. One hundred. He is back in action next against John Nelson, a player he will know very well. I'm sure, they've played many many 97. times locally.
85. Tough. 44. Hitting by uh, Luke Littler in the Isle of Man Classic. What a talent he already is, but. Yeah, frightening. I mean, he could. And we and I, I hesitate with young players, but he, he could rule the world, couldn't he? He's mature beyond his years. Well, when you, when you look back at how good MVG was at a similar age, there, there is Neil similarities in terms of hitting nine darters and. I mean, look what MVG was doing at 17. It's pretty much what Littler is doing 87. at 16 in terms Samuel of winning Carl senior competitions. 18. And some of the averages, nine darters, of course. MVG at nine darter at 17. 98. On TV. Neil Vilkar, 70. 70, the target for Neil Duff. He likes this route, but it does obscure 50. the target a little Samuel bit and didn't do 20. enough to, to move away from it there. Yeah, it was a little high. I mean, the Duff man is very 60. much a tops Neil man, but 20. the reason a lot of players go the 54 route is because it, you will rarely obscure the target on double eight. And it's going to be an open bed. Ten. I'll Samuel come, ba I'll come back four. to that in a moment. And... People may judge me for what I'm about to say, but we'll get to the end of this leg first. And that is difficult for Kankit. Proves to be the case. No score. Or twice it's caught the dart, the flight, or another part of it on the way, and it's just Neil taken Vilkar all 10. of the the balance away from it, and the point is yeah, therefore the not hitting leg. the double. Neil it's just coming back out. It's not that there's a, a bouncy double two or a bloke <laughs> behind the board with a hammer. <laughs> Yeah, what I was going to say is that Something like Neil I spend first. a lot of time he... doing what Bobby George did, actually, just looking at the dartboard and thinking about different routes and things like that. And I've, 90. I'm kind of becoming a convert to the idea that on 70, treble 14. The Mensa Sulevich route. Mm. I've actually seen a, a few players lately go that way, m more than ever. Partly because of my standards, which is, uh, what should we say, D minus, and E being the worst. <laughs> uh, but it's where you can miss as well. So if you're dropping low, then you're going to leave a 100. single to double rather than single to ball well, shot. And with the 54 route, of course, the one or the four means you can end up on the ball. And, and then also that reason that we just spoke about 58. for tops is if you do want to leave tops, you're going to leave it clear. And the adjustment on the 42 to the 28. It's yep. the smallest of the adjustments available. So does that get the, the Mason approval? Yeah, give, give, I can give. I, it's not something I've particularly thought about, but it was the, the game has, has moved on massively. But Bobby George was innovative, really. I mean, he was the one that's an 29. advocate for that route on the 1 2 1, isn't he? Yeah, he's the perfect person, I think, for a for an amateur darts 100. player to go to and say, look, these are the best chance of finishing or getting a go at a double. Yes. For the top-level professionals, they would expect to be able to not miss a big number, wouldn't they? So they don't really need to worry about that. But as I say, that Neil does Samuel Carl, strays into the five. Yeah, I think it's all about giving yourself the best opportunity. And there is... 57. Statistically, Neil Lucan, 94. far better ways of some routes than others. Oh, that's a recovery dart. 58. Sam Lucan, no 100. No doubt about this route. Looks like it's going treble 16 here. Couldn't locate it. 52. Neil Lucan, 36. He used the 48 quite a lot. Game shot on the second leg. Neil Duff. Neil Duff doubles his lead. This one's not quite caught fire. There's no history between the two. That I couldn't. They're like Sam Well, certainly first. not in game on. in ranking events. Of course, ninety-five. A lot of WDF darts. 
which is why I'm surprised that they've not met somewhere. Yeah, although it can be round. difficult, can't it, to find particularly the earlier rounds of some WDF yeah. events, at the, like the big opens. You mentioned the Dutch Open. Well, I, was, I was trying to get information on the, the Isle of Man. and it, 45. Yeah, I was waiting for a, for a pigeon to land on my windowsill. Yeah, he, he couldn't get on the ferry either, the pigeon. <laughs> 100. A bit of a 45. A knee jerk reaction on the Thursday, wasn't there? From for a, a bit of indifferent weather. But all the players who actually eventually got there said it was 85. A little OTT. They took cabs off the road and cancelled everything. 41. Yeah, one thing that. We pride ourselves on here at the Modus Super Series that the, sh the show must go on and always does and always has. Yeah. 150 weeks a year. Yeah, and that's where it came from as well, didn't it? It was born yeah. out of the need for the show to go on and pr provided players well, I, I was a little bit crew with, with, also with Elgar, opportunities to work. Well, there's, there's many awards that go around for broadcast and, and media. And, uh, um, you know, there was a stage that we were the only... 56. Live sport happening. Car 135. Not necessarily in the world, but certainly in Europe, there was no other live sport on. 70. Except the what we were 60. doing. It would have been nice to get some kind of recognition. Well, that looked 50. like it was Samuel very, Carr, very 65. close to being in. Yeah. Couldn't quite see the point of the dart, but Paul Hinks not calling game short. Told us all we needed to know. Will he be calling it now? Well, this is another one of those the shots which I'm not, I'm not a fan of aiming at the ball and you're aiming at a target which you don't want to hit. I'm, I'm I'm a big fan of the 33-32 because if you hit this single 11, the 14's just above and it's a a climb to tops. Yeah, I had the exact same chat at the, the recent seniors event as Duff opens up a three-leg lead with Paul Nicholson on one side mm -hmm. and Bobby George on the other. Both Paul like insisting Game on. that he doesn't aim for the ball when he goes for the ball 25. He said he aims for the left-hand side. I can only imagine what <laughs> Bobby's response yeah, and, was, and, uh, and uh, it's not broadcastable. 16. Exactly. Glad you said that. It started with you, R, A... <laughs> And then I uh, interrupted. And if you know, if you're if it's someone like one out of them, a James Wade, you know, who's a fan of double ten, you got that option of well, tops and ten. You got the other option of going forty-five double ten, and the ten's just above the yeah, the, the fifteen. Uh, Bobby again for the amateur player was advocating treble nineteen on that route because what his thinking is is anything to leave 46 because you've got then yep. two what the big target eight? next to each other. Well, you can pretty much go for the wire. And, I mean, I, I, yeah. I do that. You know, I, I, I don't, I have no preference to tops or 18s. I can miss both with regularity. So I'll just go for the, the wire that separates the... Yeah, and, and, and again, I, back to my lonely nights with a dartboard in bed, <laughs> but I'm thinking about <laughs> why a lot of players don't go 8 or 16 on shots 96. like 44, for example. Yep. When they can do the same thing, just aim for the wire and they're going to leave... A double. Yes. 140, Samuel Clark. Can't get to avoid the whitewash here. And now he's going to have to find a treble. And he's been unable to. And Neil Duff can add some champagne to what has so far been a bit of a, a flat match. Yeah, a real showbiz shot. Seen one from over at Thornton this week. Your highest finish of the week is from 56. Kanki, isn't it? The 154. I rarely hit double 17. Game shot on the fourth leg. Does avoid the bagel with the best leg of the match so far. A 180 in the leg and a 15 dart break of throw. We'd love to hear your opinions, of course. But Game on. Anything we discuss, we yeah, do. Yeah, get in. Yeah, get in touch. You see there at MSS Darts on 95. social media. You can tweet me as well at Chris Murphy 180. 
Still holding out on Twitter then, mate? Yeah, well, I've got to pass on the messages to you, haven't I, pal? So okay. We have one actually had one from one of our co-coms team, Matthew Edgar. Said that you were asking for uh, favourite memories today. One of his favourite is eating pies with one hundred and forty Scott Williams in Southampton practice room. So there you go, hashtag pie carumba, apparently. <laughs> Don't forget to give Matt Edgar a follow and... And have a look at his YouTube channel, Edgar TV. Sent me a fun bit with so some very, very informative 55. stuff on there. He really does break down the current affairs in the game. Looks at several of the systems 94. that we discuss, whether it be ranking Swiss systems or qualification criteria, the Premier League, which is a hot topic, whether people car like it or loathe it or love it. Well, this will be a hot finish for Neil Duff, a hot way to win the match. Not going to happen. I think we're going to start doing a few of those kind of segments here on the Super Series socials as well. Not particularly current affairs, but things like what we were talking about. What's the best way to go on this finish? The, the history of darts, all sorts of different things. If you've got anything you want to know, do tweet in. Will this go in? No score. Samuel Carl, 76. Yeah, I think does. Nice idea. Nice little sit-down round table on the stage. A couple of beers, maybe. A few snacks. and 36. Neil Carl, 36. Yeah, then another time we'll, uh, we'll do the, the video. <laughs> Double 18 then for Duff. A 4-1. Still persevering. Still trying. To find it, and in the end, he does locate the double, and it is a second 4 1 win of the morning for Neil Duff. And it's a statement one this time, defeating Sam Kanker, who himself beat Chaz Barstow. Duff making the early running in this group. The scoreline says that Duff is the man to beat, but if you look at the stats in that match, then certainly there will be opportunities to beat him. The next man tasked. With doing so will be Matt Clark a little bit later on in the morning. But Clark, before that, will face Gary Stafford. And before that, it's John Nelson against Chaz Barstow after this break.
This is the Lotus Super Series. One hundred and eighty. Available six days a week, 50 weeks of the year, the Modus Super Series bringing you dancing entertainment throughout the course of 2023. And of course, you could be here every single Saturday night. Tickets are available. They're free of charge and they are courtesy of DartShop.tv. Why don't you save the date of Champions Week finals night as well? Saturday, May the 6th. You can be here. You could be the first to put your ticket for Champions Week finals night. Well, before the break, we saw Neil Duff get the better of Sam Kankit by four legs to one. Next up for us, it's Chaz Barstow in action against John Nelson. And both looking to get their first win with the two Chrises watching in the commentary box. Thanks, Henry. And I'm sure a few people have been tapping away at their keyboards after Robert Thornton qualified for finals night. Many will want to see a legend of the sport. People paying good money to go and see him at the, the World Seniors Championship. He's going to be there. Neil Duff is making his case to join him, the WDF World Champion. It's actually already potentially lining up to be one of the most star-studded finals nights we've had here. Yeah, it could well be one of the strongest finals nights. It certainly has potential to be that way. For one of this pair to be here, I mean, I, I hate to say this so early, but first they're like already starting to, to get first. into must-win territory Game because on. they both lost their first matches by a heavy margin, and this, remember, is only a... A 10 match race rather than the three 85. days you get in Group A to settle into things. And Matthew Edgar quite perfectly sums it up when he talks about his rule of three. You can afford to lose three matches 81. at most in this group. And if you lose two of them in your first two, then you're in big trouble. Absolutely. 46. One hundred. Sixty. Looking over some of the stats for John Nelson, who's been playing in a, a lot of seniors events and qualifiers. One hundred. He uh, had averages of ninety-two, fifty-seven, forty-four, uh, and eighty-eight. You in the mid eighties, so Ooh, now then. One hundred and eighty. There you go, you can see the point is touching the target and records his second one eighty of the day. He was the four to eleven shot. For this one. Short price backers will be all over that, I would have thought. 20. Well, that's another one of the uh, things that we might touch on in 42. Charles your car 20. Social media content, the rules of darts, and one of them is that you shouldn't you shot on the first leg. Charles retrieve Marshall. them until the referee has called the score because in that situation, he had to see exactly what he was going to call, and, and if they'd been retrieved, there's no way he could have called the 180. Charles nope. through first. Game on. Eighty-four. Reason I say that short price backers would be all over this one. We need to look at the seasonal averages. Charles Barstow is up round eighty-seven twenty-four. That's some ten points above. Ninety-six. John Nelson and those kind of numbers are are similar in regards to their. Well, this is debut week for 58. John Nelson, of course, but. Charles Barstow's running average in Super Series 60. is close to 90. That 
cannot be ignored. 57. He hasn't quite hit the heights in Portsmouth that he did in Southampton. 44. Yeah, that's, and that's a concern. I'll just get your opinion on that, Chris. But, I mean, you've played on the stage. You've played on many stages over your career. But a lot of players haven't played on stages that much. Even in an empty room, do you have a different feeling playing on a stage like that compared yeah. to the room in Southampton, for example? Yeah, the, the room in Southampton was 60. very similar to the to the booths that we get on the, the Pro Tours. Um, yeah, it just it just feels exactly like the cubicle that you would play on. So it's a it's it's just a far more comfortable environment. Where when you play here, of course, you you very much feel like what you are on a stage, and you're very much aware that you're under the lights and the cameras and ball. Gets the ball. The second John Nelson. Well, I was about to say that one of the, the tricks, one of the sort of optical illusions that playing on a stage can cause is that because the setting the around you is bigger, first, everything in front of you looks smaller. But uh, probably well, the wrong time to mention it is when Nelson pins the ball. Well, no, you, no you're right. You, you often feel that, certainly back in my, my playing days when you played on TV, you, you know that the boards are literally measured 58. to within a thousandth of a mil they're yeah. absolutely identical but you go from the practice room onto a big stage especially somewhere like the world it's just fast and it just feels a long way away. the throw feels long i mean i've had back you know oh, rest his soul tommy cox the arguments i've had with him where i've, I've gone out on stage and come off of the first round going, there's no way that that's the same as what i've been practicing on and we've gone through the the rigmarole of right mate let's 22. measure it <laughs> and and it is it's identical but it just because it is so big, it just feels a feels a lot. And of course, the tension in your arm. And that's why you see a, a, a lot of low darts from players that are under pressure. 100. Well, the question, I suppose, for John Nelson in this one is whether he can sustain the level that we just saw with the 88 checkout. One out of them. Barstow's going to have big visits, big hits. He's had a couple of two treble turns in this leg, but with. Not much between them. There we see Chances Nelson a chance to just get level with Barstow and give himself the same opportunity. Bluffs his lines and Barstow now has this leg in the palm of his hand. Yeah, it's all about the consistency and and you know Barstow is going to get multiple chances 72. because of that superior consistency and scoring power. And it may be a case that Nelson's going to be 45. Forced into taking Chelsea out Carl those 52. kind of clutch finishes. Game shot on well, the I was about to say Chelsea that maybe Barstow. there's some hope in the fact that Barstow has not been great on the outer ring so far today, but that was pinned first time, and I think it is the first time he's done that. Ball fake chance to throw first. Game on. His highest checkout now of the day. His highest before that was One 20, so that shows you that he wasn't hitting doubles with the first start ever. One hundred and forty. Great reply. Eighty. One hundred and twenty-three. Some disappointment, but calls for optimism here for Nelson, who's putting a decent leg of darts together. 140. If he can find another true treble turn, he will be very much in command, but needs one treble to leave a finish. 59. And hasn't. Chaz your car, 141. So Barstow has a couple of goes from 141. Choices, treble 19, leaves double 12. 117. Yeah, shot we normally associate with the... The nine, which we saw last week. 45. Very Chelsea nearly saw one in the, in the final, didn't we? From Conor Heenahan. Game shot on well, the fourth flag. Just Basto. Suddenly settled down on the doubles, and that's ominous, not yep. just for John Nelson, but for the rest of the field. His best leg of the day. Fifth leg, John to throw first. Just there. Uh, 13 
Dark leg. The bar still. 41. You mentioned that all-time average. Well, there he is again. Just over the 91. Yep. That's pretty much where I expect him to be. I mean, although he was defeated in his opener 4-1, he averaged 87.62, which isn't too shabby at all. 99. Fact. Neil Duff with 84. his opening round win of 4-1 was just over that, 88.06. Matt Clark winning with 85.43. So, 26. It'd be a case of just being a bit, um, well, it was missed doubles, wasn't it? One from nine. That was ultimately why he lost that match. 100. Yeah, to paraphrase great friend of the Super Series, Richie Burnett. One out of lost 4-1, should have won 5 nil. How good was that as well to 42. see Richie go on a run at the the UK Open? He is absolutely box office. He is, yeah. And, you know, that is one of the things. And again, maybe something we can 45. talk about for some extra curricular content. Hold that thought. Hold that thought. Oh, thanks, Chad. Give me the chance to finish the sentence. Because it could have been game over. Nelson looking at 150, not going to take it. Yeah, just about the fact you the character of the sport, because one Chandler of the problems, I think, in the game is that there aren't that many anymore. Yeah, more on that in the next match. Or maybe Three. the next leg. Chandler Carr, 52. Or maybe caught between two targets there. He made his choice now. Game shot he's on the fifth pitched his tent in double Nelson. 16 and he's hanging around a little longer, just annoying Chaz Barstow, who, once again, when it was all going well, is the master of his own downfall on the doubles. Six yeah, legs, Chaz, to throw first. I think when they Come on. introduced the DRA into the sport, the Darts Regulation Authority. 83. Almost created a bit of a problem where you ended up with players 44. who were almost scared to express themselves or or show their personality in fear of 135 a breach of rules and I totally understand why we do need 45 the DRA just to curb some over enthusiasm let's put it that way 100 it's all about at what cost. Snooker went through a similar 100. thing where it just sort of created robots almost. Yeah, and then the one player that remained box office and watchable was 16. the one that was... And when I talk about characters, I'm not talking about the, this manufacturing of characters. I'm just talking about the freedom to express who you really are. Yeah, let Jessica your personality out. When you think of the, the two real big characters, it was Alex Higgins and, and Jimmy White in, in the world of snooker, and they were the ones that were always falling foul to their authorities. That's part of the reason why I've enjoyed the seniors so much. You've got the people like Peter Manley 96. there, who you know, he's not, he knows he's not got a hope in hell of winning one of the tournaments, but more people want to watch him than some of the other players. One. Now, John this is Carr, getting interesting 76. because Chaz Barstow seemed to have put things right on the outer ring, but as soon as it came, it went, and Nelson's going to get a go himself at tops. He's not missed a dart at double yet. 41. But as you John said John earlier, Carr, it's either in or it's in Southampton. <laughs> I don't expect him to miss here. Not three in hand, three and he doesn't. Chips it away in one. And eventually, and I'm sure with plenty of relief, Gets over the line and picks up his first win of the day. An average of 87.03, very, very similar to the 87.62 in match one. 1-1-80, one, one, three one forties, and a little bit better on the doubles, four out of 13. Well, up next, Superman returns against Gary Stafford.
Welcome back to the Modus Super Series where Chaz Barter is a 4-2 victor against John Nelson doing so with an average of 87 and 30% on the outer ring. Next up for us is the final game in the second round of fixtures. It sees Gary Stafford in action up against Matt Clark and this is going to be watched by Chris Squared. A well, one Henry's enough. I think we'll, we'll leave it at that. But yeah. Myself and Mr. Mason enjoying a, a trip down Modus memory lane, but we've also been talking about trips down Darting memory lane as well. In fact, he is nicknamed Staffy. There you go. Gary Stafford trying to be a tenacious terrier in this one against the ultra cool, calm, collected, methodical Matt Clark. A man who has been around a long time himself, actually. We're talking about high finishers and magical moments. Had the highest checkout in the 2008 World Match Play, did Matt Clark. With a 1 6 1 finish. He is uh, proving himself as a really steely competitor. First leg is Gary to throw first. We were just talking about characters, Chris, before the break. I'm going to pose a question because we are on the, the Modus Memories week this week, two-year anniversary being celebrated of this Super Series concept. Who do you think has been 46. the biggest character we've had in this event? What, in the, the, the new...? In the last two years, so since the start of when it was the Live League. I mean, we mentioned one before, Richie Burnett, of course. S Scott, no, Scott Williams yeah. for me. Fantastic. What, what a find. I, I didn't know anything about him. I'd nev never even... His, his name had, wasn't any in any way I was familiar with. And just the fact that he has his he has his own style, Agency. he has his own brand, and he has his own way of playing. And I think it's fascinating. I think you can... You know, I, I sort of watching him go for finishes and thinking, why? And then, like we were discussing earlier, you know, it's... It's all about percentages. Yeah. And it makes sense. He likes to do things that are, are less laboured, but he does it in style, doesn't he? And Scott Williams, the first word that always comes to mind when I think of him is swagger. Yeah. Yeah, he's... he's yeah, he's got game. Yeah, that, that one that always springs to mind with him is the, the 13 double six on 25, where it's just all next to each other. It's... Seems that you, you watch it and think, why is everybody not doing this? Yeah. Why is mean? everybody not doing yeah. that? Matt Clark with a maximum. I'll tweet in your answers as well. The best and biggest character that we've had at the Super Series or Live League as it was before. Doesn't have to go for Bull here. Well, he, he did. Didn't find the 25, but he can leave it nice 95. and handy. And that's worked out absolutely perfectly for Matt Clark. Even when it goes wrong, it goes right. <laughs> well, that's when you know it's your day. One hundred and thirty-one. Matt Lucar, 40. He's going to play Neil Duff in a couple of games' time. So between this and that, Sam Kankett and John Nelson, that Duff-Clark match is already looking like a real pivotal contest Game shot on the first leg. And despite Matt Stafford getting himself to a double Matt Clark denies him a go at it and the first leg is in the ledger under his name mm, a good leg it was a 14 dart break of throw one to Second four leg, to throw first Game for on. this one one of the one other forty things about the Super Series is its continued growth. We showed you earlier in the week the, the amount of different players we've had from different countries, and we've got a, a link with ADC Oceana Thank at the moment. Are. Three players from their ranking system will make it through to the tournament here in Portsmouth in, in May. What is it, it going to be, the top three in there? Yeah, top three. Raymond Smith, in fact, is currently in fourth place on that. 60. So he will have a a real charge, a real attempt to get back here. Mal coming top at the moment, followed by Jeremy Fagg. And then Tim Pusey in third place. 100. There are a few other well-known names on the list as well. Robbie King fifth. 
Ben Robb, who's been here before, tied eighth. David Platt, tied 11th. Yeah, Mum, formerly from the 43. West Mint. Brother of John Platt. I thought you were going to say Nick then. <laughs> That's a different show, isn't it? 42. Yeah, and it's just a, an example of the growth of the ADC. As, I, as I've said many times, I don't think the amateur game has, has ever 92. looked better in terms of opportunities, organisation. Yeah, I know there are more people involved and they put work in, put investment in behind the scenes, but always feel like just giving a mention to Steve Brown in particular, a man 96. who, with the ADC, the JDC, seems to have effectively sacrificed his own career for, for the good of the sport. Yeah, absolutely. He put his, his own career on the back burner to create that JDC platform, which started 46. off in a back room of a, of a pub many, many years ago. And we're seeing the production line come to fruition with people like Thomas Banks and Luke Littler and, and many, Carl many Wall, others. He was almost the first man to hit a nine dart here, Steve Brown. Missed one in that afternoon and then in the evening, Conor Heenan hit the first. That's tricky. Well, there was a shout to do 16. what you were Can telling us that you did to Simon Whitlock yesterday. Go for Bull Bull there. Yeah, absolutely. And now he's got to move away, surely. Yeah, yeah. he he doesn't mind a, a double 66. double route. Michael Carr, 60. Andy Hamilton, believe it or not, Chris, last time he was here, started going for the small bit of the 20 on 60. Yeah, it's it's something he used to do uh, in practice. Uh, obviously, I I lived in Stoke-on-Trent for a, a good few years, and 50. the main Gary reason was that was to to practice with Andy. He, had, he owned a pub at the time, and we had our own private room in the back. And, uh, yeah, he would... He would use he would go for the small twenty on sixty just to avoid a avoid the blocker dart. And of course we've seen Daryl Gurney now have the Game ability to the throw a, a flat Stafford. dart so it doesn't mask the, the, the tops. Yeah, the evolution of this sport. But it's incredible, isn't it? All of the different areas where so things are like the equipment itself, yeah. how you throw, where you throw. Yeah, the the, the dart the, the big the big one for me. It's the quality of board, and, and now, of course, it's it's been a talking point for many years. But you know, the 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 target area is bigger. The the reduced bounce outs, the, the doubles are bigger. And that's why we now see 60. so many of these incredible averages and so many nine darters evenly matched. Game so far, this one probably fair that it is one apiece, even though Clark missed a couple of darts at double to make it 2 0. Both players playing at a similar standard, and of course, Stafford had got himself down to a double in both legs himself. 100. Eighty-one. Reminder that it is Thursday, so I mean you can watch darts all day if you like today. Here on Sporty Stuff TV or the Motor Super Series YouTube channel available around the world, you can catch us until 61. around two p.m. in this group and have a bit of a break before those of you who like to watch the Premier League tune into that and then rejoin us at ten for Group B this evening, which is looking. Very, very tasty indeed. 140. Yeah, the line up tonight. Richie House and Johnny Haynes. David Davis, is he on debut? 58. Played once before. Right. Daryl Fitton. And 
Courtney Cox, of course, who went agonizingly close yesterday to winning Group A. That was agonizingly close for Gary Stafford there, but the leg isn't close, so he will be back. Yeah, great group. Do tune in, 10 p.m. Same double session tomorrow. Then Saturday night, the action gets underway at 7.30. Exclusively on the Modus Super Series YouTube channel, the final and semi-finals at Semi-finals get underway at 10 p.m. live on Sporty Stuff TV. No score. Matthew Khan, but better still, come and join us. Tickets available for free via dartshop.tv. Yeah, well, that often fascinates me. You, know, you get the odd moan about, oh, is it, is it on TV? Well, I'm pretty sure everybody's got a smart TV nowadays, and you just get the YouTube app and put in Modus 60. Super Series. And you can watch it on your 20. TV. And then to make it easier, subscribe and click that notification bell so you know when we're going live. Yeah, absolutely. There's lots of other bonus content on there. Well, it'll be a bonus for a player to hit a double in this leg. Ten. But Mario so Carl far, 30. it's been miss, 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 miss. 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 <laughs> Shall we carry on? No score. Oh, Got a yield card add another ten. three to that. Gary Stafford has now missed 11 at double in the match. Matt Clark himself has missed eight. Dirty dozen for Staffy. Unlucky 13. No score. And it's going from bad to worse. That was Mark unlucky. Car 30. That was in and out. And don't forget how far ahead he was. He, Clark was back on 222 when he was on tops. Game shot and in Clark the third picked leg. his pocket. Yeah, that really was. One of those that's got away for Gary Stafford. And Both leg matches through the first. Game on. Third consecutive break of throw, which I always say is an indication of a a scruffy match usually, and that's the case here. Neither player has really grabbed the match by the 95. scruff of the neck. And don't forget today's tungsten teaser. Can you name the 14 PDC 76. top 10 players that have competed here at the Super Series? And for a bonus question, well, former world number one has competed on that very stage. Give you a little clue. Not a clue as to who's in it, but who's not in it. When we talk about the Super Series, we are just talking about the two years since we went physical, yes. we say. Of course, Raymond van Barneveld played in a few of the darts from home yeah, memorably. matches. 40. That leg, certainly not memorable from Gary Stafford a moment ago. In fact, he missed more darts at double than it took him to get there. Yeah, that one's going in the recycle bin rather than the highlight reel. Straight on the cutting room floor. 95. 95, 132, 95, the... Three scoring visits for Matt Clark in this fourth leg. 26. Are there any players that come to mind that we've not had here at the Super Series that you'd like to see competing? Uh, one always comes to mind when I get asked that question, and I think it's been close, and I think it will happen at some point, and that is 96. a certain Bo Greaves. Ditto. Because I really think that she's in a position where she'd be a real contender. One hundred and twenty. I really think she'd be a massive contender to win development tour events. And uh, if I was advising her in any capacity, I'd say just go and give that a go because that would be some story. And also, it's valuable experience, isn't it? And it frighteningly will. 51. 
sister in taking a game to a yet yeah, another Absolutely. level. And you know, you get the the moaners, the haters, whatever you want to call them, that that you know, rubbish fan and Sherrick's achievement. But the reason that it made the global headlines 100. it did Mario is because Carthage it was men that she beat. Uh, Bo Greaves rocks up at a development jury event and beats all the, the lads in that tournament and wins a title, and that is going to travel around the world. Well, all three were very unfortunate with the Game with the draws the at the Worlds, weren't they? Absolutely. That's our first hold of throw. 17 darter from Matt Clark. Yeah, I'd... I'd if they got it, third first... I Game think on. it's it, it's undervalued what Fallon did, especially it couldn't have come at a worse time with with everything going into to lockdown and you know, she 99. was invited onto shows that attract millions of viewers in America and when when she eventually got over there, the media attention was staggering. Well, that puts new eyes on our sport and that's you know, that's a massive thing to for the for the sport to get 100. recognition globally. Yeah, well I, I I was actually with her the day after she beat um Ted Everts, the first one, uh, helping out with the media stuff, and we went. We were up in the morning, got sent a car to the hotel 100. at four in the morning to go to Good Morning Britain, straight across to the BBC studios. In the car, in between, she was doing telephone interviews everywhere. Never had a day like it. It, it didn't stop, and to her credit, she didn't moan once either. One hundred. There are a few where you ask them to do one thing a month, and uh, <laughs> you get a mouthful back. <laughs> But yeah, she did a bit, and I think people don't realise that she didn't just go and win a game of darts. She did an awful lot to promote the 100. game yep. in the aftermath as well. Uh, and we'll we'll see that, like what we were discussing with the the JDC, and we're now seeing the fruits of the the labour of that in these incredible young players that are are coming through. And there's you know it's not just the the two we constantly sort of refer to because obviously those 58. those two have had some amazing media coverage and TV opportunities. But in time, we will see the reason why young girls decided to pick up and an have, have a go at it is because of, of what they saw Fallon achieve. Yeah, and don't forget, Fallon Choke didn't qualify for that tournament through a women's series. That appeared the year after, didn't it? It appeared in 2020, the start of the women's series. So she made it through a qualifier 96. in which she Gary beat Lisa Ashton. And who knows if... I'd, the women's series, well, it may exist, but I'm not sure it would be at the level that it that it is already if it wasn't for that moment. 50. And it's continuing to grow, Mario which is Carl great, and, and get the support from, from all the ladies. Well, a big break on offer here for Matt Clark. A 147 break, no less. That's not far away, is it, the snooker worlds? Got a bit of a snarl on his face here, Chris. He meant business. He wanted it done there and then. He went all Bob Anderson <laughs> on us. Now, you were talking about the, the Daryl Gurney 95. flatty earlier on. Gary Gary's Stafford is a type 60. of player who would benefit from that kind of shot. He uses yep. long darts and they stand up. And do that. Can he find a way? Well, he, he can. Well, well, he only way. had, Gary what, Stafford. two thirds at best of the bed to aim at, but he found the top corner and keeps the game going. Three breaks have been followed by two holds. Maps two Matt Clark will be hoping Game for on. a. Third hold of throw. Eighty. One hundred and forty. Yeah, that is somewhere, going back to that chat on the the women's well, darts, that is somewhere where the PDC really have stepped forward and produced a platform. Interestingly as well, the interest in it, I've, I've covered all the women's series events so far, and there was a Euro Tour going on at the same time, and on all the sports news websites, darts websites separate because they cover everything, but just general sports news websites, Bo Grease, when she made it 10 in a row, that was the top story for a moment. One hundred and forty. Well, it was it was dominance only 
on the levels seen by Taylor. Yeah. What did she go? 66 unbeaten, wasn't it? Or was it 70? 93. I think she got Mario to 70, yeah. 41. Yeah. And was only beaten by Makuru Suzuki that weekend, who, interesting, was only beaten by Bo Greaves that weekend. So we might have seen a complete changing of the guard in terms of the top two. Well, top two in this group is going to be interesting. That's what is required for a place at finals night to join Robert Thornton. Mark Clark is looking to make it two wins out of two. Stafford needs a one two eight to stop him, and now he can't do it. Can't do one, two, four, and two. 44. No real Mario pressure Kahn, on the 48. 48. The only pressure, of course, is winning line pressure. He'll pick his spot. He'll do his little twizzle. Try his best to lay some kind of marker. That's yeah. okay. I love seeing players do that. 16. Couldn't complete Gary the sandwich. 84. Yep, may well get a dart at the ball here. Well, that should be the minimum requirement. Make sure the 14. Well, you can't even accuse him of gambling on the treble there. 44. Mario Kart, 32. And again, the grinder, as we've coined him. Matt Clark looks set to grind out another 4 2 win. 4-2 against John Nelson in his first match. A double four. The 4-2 against the Gary Stafford Clark. in his second. Superman off to a super start. He was runner-up in Modus Super Series 2, and he gets his Super Series 3 campaign underway with a brace of 4-2 victories. He's going to take on... The other man to have won both matches so far, and Neil Duff, in just a couple of games' time, but in a couple of minutes' time, Sam Kankit will return to face John Nelson.
Welcome back to the Modus Super Series, where we are two rounds of matches down, which means Chris Mason is with me up here on the balcony to assess what we've seen so far. Well, it's Neil Duff and Matt Clark that have asserted themselves at the top of the table, but you still feel as if they've got gears to go. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think I don't think either of them have reached top gear yet. I think Chaz Bar Barstow was just showing a bit of rustiness early on, but he bounced back well with a win. And yeah, it's it's not far off what we what we anticipated early on. I did. I did think Neil Duff was a little bit too big a price, and he's two wins from two, and like you say, he's, he's nowhere near on his A game yet. Well, Gary Stafford in that last game against Matt Clark feels as if he may have missed an opportunity there. Yeah, definitely, definitely, and I, and I think John Nelson will against Chaz Barstow because he, he, well, they were both right in their games and just let it, let it get away from him towards the tail end. Is there possibly a worry now for the likes of Kankit and Barstow that potentially Duff and Clark could start even at this early stage, beginning to rack the points up and create too big a bridge a gap. Yeah, and we've seen that before. It's it's okay leading, it's tough chasing because you never feel like you're closing that gap. And we've seen that with, with Group A, of course. Um, so yeah, it's going to be tough. And I think someone needs to sort of almost stamp their authority on the group and, and be that leader and be that front runner. And it may well be Neil Duff. We'll continue talking about Group C in just a second, but of course, this is our anniversary week here at the Modus Super Season. Of course, you can get in contact with us via social media with some of your favourite moments with the hashtag Modus Memories. But we thought in this little segment of the program, we'd look back at some of our winners we've seen here at the Live Lounge in Portsmouth and actually go through the all star cast list of winners throughout the two years we have been going. And well, in terms of weekly title wins, 48 players have won at least one weekly title. But when it comes to multiple wins, well, <laughs> is it a shock horror that Robert Owen's top of the list on five? No, and he, he's one of the players that has played the most, of course, and, and he'll be the first to admit that played its part in why he got his, his tour card back and, uh, and, it, and has gone on to do, do very well so far this year. It's just lacking a few results. I don't think many players have a higher average than, than Robert Owen in terms of converting that into wins. But he's, he's going along quite nicely. Conan Whitehead, Charles Barstow and Colin Osborne, another group of, of regulars here at the Super Series and down in Southampton, of course. And Richie Burnett and um, another player that has, has got his tour car back and had an incredible run just the other week in the UK Open. I think the biggest surprise is Martin Adams has only won three times. I know. Yeah, it, it is quite surprising, isn't it, when you, when you think of the amount of time. But he, he tends to get very close, doesn't he, Martin? Makes a, makes a lot of finals, that's for sure. And say 48 players are winning titles. That, of course, includes Champions Week as well, which is what we saw Raymond Smith, the Australian, do last time. Actually, every single time he's been here at the Super Series, he's gone on to win his week. And in Oceania, the ADC are having their finals weekend in terms of bringing free qualifiers over to the United Kingdom for Series 4 of this event. So we will have three Australian players playing in Series 4, and we're very much looking forward to that. And we're very much looking forward to Game 7, aren't we, here at the Super Series? See Sam Kankit in action up against John Nelson. Big game for both early on still. Yeah, absolutely. He made a, made a great start, didn't he, Sam, in defeating one of the, the, the favourites to win this group and possibly win the week. And he's got to try and kick on from that. Well, let's get it on then. This man's going to make the race down to the culture box. Got the sprinting shoes on? Uh, no. <laughs> Murph, it's all yours for leg one. Don't worry, I'm always ready to guide you through darts action. And this is an important tussle as well for Sam Kankit, who can keep himself firmly in the race. Early stages, of course, but at the end of the day, we will be halfway. As for John Nelson, having lost his first couple of games, both by a margin of two legs, then it's probably must win for him. If he doesn't win it, he's going to have to win every single other match. Otherwise, it will be Good night, John Boy. The ADC Both qualifier. Like through first. Game on. And it was great to see that list of all-time winners at the Modus Super Series. Robert Owen, the man out in front. That may well change okay. this year. Of course, Owen has gone on to bounce up the springboard and get a tour card. And one of those winners 42. has just sat down alongside me. Yeah. 29 of those names have, have gone on to now hold a tour card. 58. Yeah, incredible. We're only a couple of new winners away from making it to 50 different champions. Of course, that and who knows when that will happen. It could be 
next week. It could be next year. I was interested to see that Neil Duff actually hasn't won a week. Out. So, there are some players you've seen that win that many games that you assume they have, but he's uh, he's lost twice in finals, beaten by 100. Lee Evans and Johnny Haynes. Yeah. And he's made multiple finals nights, hasn't he? I wonder if he was 45. one of the curse of the Group A winners. We've, we've also had, haven't we... Uh, 92. A couple of... We were talking about women's darts earlier. We've had a, a couple of women in the finals. Fallon Sherrick winning a week, as we 58. saw on that graphic. We've seen Lisa Ashton make it to the, the money match as well. 98. Sam McCarr, 120. We were talking about themed weeks yesterday, weren't we? And we'd love to... Do a, a women's week. Yeah, uh, having covered all the women's series, I've, I've put in my list of 12, put it that way. Certainly think there is enough depth to do that. Yeah, for sure. And again, great experience. 88, Sam McCarr, 52. Well, Sam Kankit, who himself is garnering great experience here this week. Double eight. Game shot on the first leg. Sam Kankett. I'm just thinking of all the, the women that have played here. A nod to the ladies. Mercurial as well. She... Yeah, Trina Gulliver just last week. Second leg, John yep. the third first. Game on. Corinne Hammond, of course, who has done... Well, she's done every job here, yeah, hasn't she? multiple roles, including 40. almost throwing Henry off the balcony one night, I believe. Fifty-eight. Another One week which I'm a, a fan of, which Henry mentioned yesterday. A World Cup pairs week. Twelve different 25. nationalities. Yeah, there's so much potential to do different things. Although I think it might be a bit unfair when we get to Champions Week and one team's got two players in it. 85. No, these, these would definitely be specials. Yeah. Well, the problem is we've only got two weeks to do them and there's certain festivities happening those weeks. 125. The only week that Henry hasn't come up with yet is a week off. Well, I'm only getting one off in the next six. 98, John Lucar, 138. All sat there, or have you got plans to, to play again at some point? 58. Yeah, I think I think there's something happening in Series 4. I think they're going to do another Legends-type week. 99, John Lucar, 80. So then I'll you'll play the week after. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I'll be blowing the dust off the darts <laughs> the week after or the week before. 31. Sam McCarr, 136. No, it's good, isn't it? It has helped out. The, the amount of players we saw from that sort of seniors mode playing a couple of weeks John before McCarr, the seniors 49. world championship as well. Yeah, I think I, I think I missed a trick there, but my, my workload was was just hectic. And, of course, we had the introduction of the, the two new tournaments, the McCarr, Bahrain and... Copenhagen, so that meant two trips into Stratford in central Game London. Shot on the second leg, Sam Kankit. 2 0 Kankit, great finish. Yeah, very tidy, wasn't it? Um, yeah, and I, I just think I could have done with possibly having a the week before just to get like that Sam competitive to do edge. Certainly felt like I went into that World Seniors just undercooked. It was a good game, though, wasn't it, between you and Terry Jenkins? Yeah, Very... I think it was entertaining. Mm. Had lots of, well, he hit lots of 180s, didn't he? It's six 180s. And... You had a bit of a, a penchant for the bullseye, as yeah, I recall. back to back 10 plus ball finishes. And again, I just sort of felt like I'd got back into the game at the break and then I had to come off. 57. And then I got up obsessed with the, the average monitor up in the corner. 
Certainly like some sellotape yeah. over that or something similar. Maybe a curtain over it the next time I play. Well, we'll keep you informed as to when Macy's going to be back on the hockey here. And you might want to book your tickets to finals night that week. Yeah, I'll be sat in the crowd with you. <laughs> <laughs> and if you do want to see him, of course, you can see Thank him you. at the uh, the World Seniors Masters in Yeovil. Yeah, Westlands. Tickets available for that. Same place, dartshop.tv. Yeah, and also, in, I think it's just next week, isn't it? 97. The Champion of Champions, yeah, Champion, in Blackpool. Yeah, Beaver Blackpool. And again, talking about not missing a trick, Robert Thornton 96. this week, preparing for that. Yes. Yeah, I mean, this is perfect preparation for that. Blackpool is a bit like Scotland 100. anyway, isn't it? It is, but he's got a shocking record there in the world match. Break. Yes. Only ever won one match, didn't he, Robert Thornton? 100. Samuel Clark, There's 96. not many tournaments I've got a better record in than Robert Thornton, but that's <laughs> that's one of them. Well, this is a very good display at the end of legs, legs Sam Kankert. from Sam Kankert. There's not been much before the finishes, but no trouble on the doubles, three out of five. Yeah, clinical. And, of course, the golden ticket qualifier, well, like John which you can still first. enter, Game on. is actually at the venue, isn't it? Next Friday. Yep. And the winner 95. of that golden ticket will face, well, the GOAT, Bill Taylor. And incredibly, the first round match sees a, a rerun of the World Seniors Finals, doesn't it? Yeah, Housen also here, of course, this week. He's playing this evening. 100. Taking on Robert Thornton, Martin Adams and Kevin Painter, Trina Gulliver. 85. All in the field. Gulliver, of course, was here last week. Adams was here the week 58. before. Yeah, but it, I'm a little bit worried for Martin Adams, actually. Uh, it was the first time I've really seen him at the Super Series be poor for an entire week. He's had off days before, but yeah, not off weeks. No, he seemed to, seemed to find it a struggle. He's carrying a, a knee problem and a shoulder problem, of course. Which is 60, John Lucar, 123. You can imagine hard to manage when you're you're on your feet for that length of time. 33. David Cameron, of course, involved in that champion of champions. Was the Masters winner 93. last year. 93. John Yuka, 90. Yeah, not that one, if you're not yeah. <laughs> fully averse with the the darting hoi polloi. Yeah, I got to see that trophy 82. down at the World John Seniors. John Yuka, 105. Is, well, a thing of absolute beauty. And weighs a ton. Well, this would be a thing of absolute beauty. Absolutely extraordinary Kanker. checking out from San Kanka in a match that offered little else, really. Not a 180 between the pair. Only two darts at double for Nelson, but Kanka, when he got to the finish, he flourished. 105 to win it, and four out of six overall. San Kanka emerging as a big contender in this group. As for Nelson, though, well, he's lost his first three matches, and that spells trouble. Looks like he won't be at finals night on Saturday. You could be, though. Tickets available via dartshop.tv. They're absolutely free. Tune in here at the Super Series for the next match. Neil Duff against Matt Clark. That pair have both won all of their matches so far.
Welcome back to the Motor Super Series. Hassan Kankit ran out a 4-0 winner against John Nelson in our seventh match of the day. Next up for us is Neil Duff up against Matt Carr. Before we get the action underway, we've seen a lot of the Duff man here at the Super Series. Of course, the reigning WDF world champion winning that title against Thibaut Tricol in April. So let's have a little look at his all-time stats here at the Super Series. You can see one more in these last 94-180. So should break the 100 barrier over the next couple of days. Had a 10 dark quick leg. Maybe go one better than this week let's hope and that high checkout of 170 an overall average of 87.42 and a 33 percent checkout rate so one in three on the doubles and a highest winning average of 102.96 impressive stuff from the duff man he takes on matt clark who has always been a consistent performer here at the super this should be a good one it's the top two in the table going toe to toe as watched by chris squared thank you very much henry yeah, we'll circle that stat of 97, 180s for Neil Duff. He's likely to make the century at some point today, maybe even in this match, the 2022 WDF World Champion. But also going back to the chat you had with Henry before, still slightly surprised that Neil Duff hasn't won a week. Yeah, yeah, he's, a, he's another one that's consistently made finals nights. It's just not worked, not worked out for him. But yeah, he's was 94 up until today. He had three in that opening match win against Gary Stafford. He then backed that up with a 4-1 win over Sam Kankett. Three away first from leg is nailed you through first. Big milestone. Game on. Sixty. He's going to have to deal with the pace of Matt Clark. I do find it interesting watching these games where you've got a pacier player against a more one hundred methodical man. Yeah, I tended to, especially on stage, and I just sort of take a, a nice wander towards the drinks table and 85. faff around there for a couple of seconds and then sort of walk back round. It was the, the slowest play you've ever faced. Oh, wow. 100. An American guy, Schneider. He would have a few ghost throws, <laughs> then throw a dart, and then walk away, have a chunter to himself, a couple more ghost throws, and then approach the hockey, uh, another couple of ghost throws, and, yeah, eventually throw the dart. Well, you were talking about characters that we've had here at the Super Series earlier on, and Richie Burnett comes to mind. I remember being in a Players' Championship room in Crawley back around a decade ago, actually, and he was playing a, a player that you probably know called Gareth Pass. Yep. And he wasn't quite From the Midlands. And Richie, I think it, they were down to sort of the last 16 31. by then, so the some of the adjacent boards were empty, and Richie was actually walking down three boards in between throws. Yep. You've got to try and find something to, to occupy your mind, because if you just stand behind and sort of watch the player, you then you then get yourself a little embroiled. I think on the, it was a combination of him occupying his mind, but also drawing the attention of the officials to a house low who was actually 24. playing. Double 12 for Duff. Game no trouble at all. Leg. Matt yeah, Clark not in the leg. Don't have to worry about the pace if you can leave him in your slipstream like that. Something like Matt to throw first, game on. And uh, and you don't mind playing a slow player as long as they're consistently slow. It's when uh, when someone starts playing the old dark arts. <laughs> well, Gary Anderson 100. fumed, didn't he, at Mensa Suljevic at that World Championship. Yeah. And he, his point was, rightly or wrongly, that 
it was the inconsistency of speed from Sully which was upsetting. 87. Him. Not yeah, so much the pace. You know, gamesmanship's okay to a to a level. But it's where it breaches, it crosses that line, doesn't it? Yeah. I, I think that if I was any good at darts, I'd be terrible. So I, I'm not going to uh, sort of be a hypocrite. If I was, I think it was Dirk van Dijvenbode who played Anderson Neck, that I'd have done exactly the same that Sullivich did, knowing it got to him. He didn't. He could have showed him ultimate respect. Matt's last score was 140. Got the ultimate beating, the ultimate <laughs> punishment for it. Just a little adjustment of the scoreboard. Sorted now. Quick reminder of uh, Henry's tungsten teaser. The question was, can you name 100. the 14 players to have competed in the Modus Super Series and to have also been ranked in the PDC Top 10? And for a bonus point, which 16. one of them was previously Car, PDC World number one? Answers at MSS Darts on social media. Hashtag Modus Memories. Oh, we've mentioned him, haven't we? We have. Already. The former number one. 97. Yeah, great question. Well, the, the actual 42. Michael six Carson players 64. in action here this morning when they saw the tungsten teaser on the monitor next door actually collated their own list. <clears throat> 32. It's, it's quite close, isn't it? Yeah, they're not far off. Couple of uh, red herrings in there that probably One made it to sort 40. of eleven or twelve, but never actually breached the top ten. Yeah, they took took great delight in saying that they game shot on the second leg. Mark Clark wrote my name down and then scrubbed it out. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've just come up with a couple that they didn't get, so we might even have They're it like by Neil now, you know. First. Game on. We'll wait till the, the end of the show, or near the end of the show, to reveal the answer, but I'm quite, getting quite excited about the fact we might have... Uh, 96. Between me, Mace, and the six players, <laughs> come up with the goods. If you can do it by yourself, then you deserve a, some kind of prize, I'm sure. Well, it's Henry's tungsten teaser, so it's his responsibility to dish out <laughs> the uh, cash prize, Henry. <laughs> 99. Well, if you can name all 14, I'm the one that was a former world number one. 100. You're most definitely a hardcore darts fan. <clears throat> well, it's a good question because it, it's memory of who's played here and then putting them. I'm sure a few people will answer and the player hasn't actually played here. They'll just sort of assume that they have. 59. We've also had a fair few world champions. That might be a, a tungsten teaser from Henry later on in the week, but here's one of them. Neil 45. Duff, Robert Thornton, world seniors champion. Interesting, earlier we were talking about Thornton struggling in Blackpool, but one thing that he's done in the seniors, he's won titles that he didn't win <laughs> on the main tour, the match play in the world championship. <clears throat> he won the Masters, so he didn't bother with that one. 123. Just beat Neil Duff en route at the Circus Tavern last month. And incredibly, going into that 60. World Seniors, Thornton wasn't in the, the greatest of form. He played down in, in Reading, didn't he, in a couple of the tour events with... Well, it hit for his level, he was absolutely ordinary. Yeah, and what he can do with the experience is... Himself up for that one match. He can, and he looks head and shoulders above the rest in all of the seniors' events, really. I know he lost at the the World Masters, but at that match play in both World Championships, he's just looked a 45. cut above. 45. Matt yeah, 138. A, he looks what he is, a, a class act on the hockey. But hasn't won a week here yet in Portsmouth. Maybe that will change this week. I reminded him of that yesterday, just to 
a couple of times. Yeah, the, uh, 86. there aren't many competitors as fierce as Robert Thornton in any sport that are genuinely nice guys as well, and he certainly is. Ninety-nine, Mark Lucar, fifty-two. Fifty-two then for Clark, the grinder, the Cliff Thorburn, as Chris Mason described him earlier on. He's toyed with Neil Duff in this game. The Northern Irishman took the first leg. Game shot on the third Clark leg. Clark has Mark now Clark. broken throw and effectively has control of the contest. It looked like at the early stages of this match that... <clears throat> Neil D Duff was going to run Ball away with Matt's it. Through first. <coughs> Game on. Well, 16 and 17 darts, respectively, for Matt Clark has given him that all-important break of throw and a 2-1 lead. 59. We're down to the pace or the, the lack of rhythm that Duff is struggling with here. 60. What I would say is it, that that's the key thing, isn't it? You, you can play a player of any pace as long as you don't allow it to affect how you throw the darts. What you can find yourself doing is throwing a little bit quicker to try and compensate. Even Eighty even four. with quick players as well. You, you see, I mean, the, going back to Gary Anderson, the match that is the infamous final now against Gerwin Price in the Grand Slam, a lot of that stemmed from the fact that Gary didn't actually just take a moment 59. to let Price walk past him. Yeah. Yeah, exactly that. Uh, and and just got embroiled, didn't he? Yeah, and then just every time he's about to throw his first dart, Price is in the corner of his eye. So he's thinking that he's doing something intentionally to put him off or hearing something because he might be muttering to himself, but he's yeah, passing Gary Anderson in that moment. I mean, the, the exclusion zone is open to interpretation, isn't it? But... 100. Really, you see Matt Clark there, he won't step into it until Neil Duff is walking back, having retrieved his darts. Effectively, until you've retrieved your darts, it's still your go. Yes. 45. However, it's very much deemed that once you've thrown the last dart, as you could see there with, with Neil, and you get a lot of these ones saying about Michael being in the he's not actually fully in the exclusion zone is his toes sort of hover over the the edge of it but you've got to be physically in there yeah again that, interpretation uh, I'd, I'd i'd be a horror because knowing that michael van gerwin plants half a foot in the exclusion zone what i would probably do is the old 100. kevin painter probably first just start to... and reverse yeah back you up <laughs> I'd be booed. Something chronic, wouldn't I? 87. Mario Kart, 76. You'd be a fan's favourite. <laughs> oh, not now, so nothing changes. 76 then for Clark, who suddenly is holding all of the aces in this match. Double eight. To stretch the lead. And go within one. 72. The other car, 100. Well, it only takes one shot. It only takes one moment. This, though, won't be it. I was I'm thinking about it. I was very much the... 78. Mark Lucar. The Gary four. Anderson school of thinking. Let's just go up there and have a game of darts and may the best man win. Game shot on the oh, fourth Clark, leg. Mark the Clark. best man so far in this one. And there is something, I think, to be admired because one of the dangers of that school of play, that m method of play, is that it's like Neil you can get the old careless Neil. start. Maybe we saw that with Neil Duff's first start there where Clark and the players of that ilk take great care with every single dart they throw. 60. Yeah, every dart is thrown with purpose. It's very measured. One hundred and eight. They were most definitely measured. What a time to find your first max. Purpose and perfection 44. from Matt Clark. 
who is on course to carry on his super success at the Super Series. Well, a win here, and he will be the the only undefeated player, won't 100. he? 100. Yeah, Neil Duff with two out of three. And if he loses here, Sam Kankit with the same return. Has Barstow about to take on Gary Stafford, who 100. is yet to win, and Barstow could also be two out of three. So you're a big four call looking very, very good, Chris. Broken clock is right twice a day, mate. Stafford and Nelson must feel like Groundhog Day, mustn't they? Both yep. languishing fifth and sixth in a group 100. again. And if Stafford does go down, then we can probably wave goodbye to both of them because I know it's early, but they'd probably have to win all of their remaining matches to qualify. 59, Manu Car 121. This is to win it. I go, I go for the 25. I'd like to see the 45 or the treble 7. Yeah, right shot for me, that. 81. So much can go wrong going for the ball, can't it? Yeah, and again, in that position, he knows if he misses, he leaves 46, where he's not going to mess that up because he's got that double. Matt Lucar, 40. Double segment target to aim at. Now he leaves tops for a quite polished performance in the end. Neil Duff was out of the blocks quick, but in the, Game shot in the match. tortoise Matt. and the hair clash, it is a tortoise who wins it. The same old tale. And Matt Clark sends Neil Duff tacking a 4-1 win for Superman. Check out percentage of 50%. Neil Duff only had one dart, a double he hit it, but that was as good as it got in the very first leg of the match, and it is... Three from three for Matt Clark, who emerges as the top dog in Group C. Coming next, well, speaking of dogs, it's Staffy. Gary Stafford taking on the Prince, Chaz Barstow. Stay with us.
Welcome back to the Moda Super Series where Matt Clark has got the better Neil Duff by four legs to one here in Group C in Week 6. That means he is now free from free in terms of the league standings. Next up for us, we're going to see Chaz Barstow in action against Gary Stafford. Chaz, again, another one of our regulars here at the Super Series. In 2021, he really was probably the player of the year at the Super Series. These are his all-time stats here at the Live Lounge, and they do make for impressive reading, similar to Duff, a 170, a 10 dart leg. The overall average of 90.58 over an elongated period in over 240 matches and a 35% checkout ratio. The highest winning average, well, it's one of the highest in the competition's history. It's the second highest in the competition's history of 117.88. So some great stuff from the Prince. He's up against Gary Stafford and he is joined on, alongside Gary Stafford and in the commentary box alongside Chris Mason is someone who is always a fan's favourite and when I say fan's favourite the fans from Curry's because for the next 20 minutes giving us some hot air is Chris Murphy Good job you're on the balcony Henry Well I'll provide the uh, the nonsense and Chris Mason will provide the sense according to H Talking of sense my, uh, my tip here is Barstow minus 2.5 legs. So to win 4 1 or better, the evens, he's 2 to 11 to win this match. And we just started to see signs last time out from Chaz, who averaged yet again into the late 80s. And a lot better on the finishing. His only defeat was to Sam Kankit, but that was a. Uh, more a game of missed opportunities for Barstow, who only hit one from nine. Four from 13 last first time. First leg is to throw first. Still averaged over game 87. So the scoring power was on display. Well, we can't argue with facts, can we? And those stats that we saw. Oh, outstanding. That Henry voiced over there, incredible. 81. The amount of maximums, an average of more than 90 in all of those matches. I mean, there are a lot of professional players or say that loosely, inverted commas, two a card holders. 58. That would kill to have that average over the course of a season. Absolutely. Never mind all of those matches. It's a 93. staggering amount of games, isn't it? I had to change my uh, my metaphor then, because I was going to say they'd give the right arm for it, but that wouldn't really work out in darts, would it? Not necessarily left-handed. <laughs> Well, Barstow bounced back from that 4-1 defeat to Kankit in his opener. 59. Beating John Nelson 4-2 himself. So looking to put himself in a good position. It, it's looking like there's every possibility that we see Nelson and Stafford get cut adrift. And we have a similar type of group to last week in Group C where the rest 84. of them fight it out. Well, very much like Group A this week. Yeah. Yeah, rare actually, wasn't it? And, and I know that we knew in the last match it was likely for Robert Thornton in the last set of matches to go through, but very rare 58. that we have a group A because only one place is up for grabs where we don't know who's going through till I think it was a penultimate match of the yep. day and there were still three players left with three games to play. So it's been competitive so far this week and it looks set to continue. Yeah, well, Richie Housen, he, even himself still had a chance to, to win the 42. group, didn't he? Gary Car 145. When you get one or two pull clear, which is often the case, as Stafford, yeah, sensible to sort of stay in that area. Um, 89. You can end up with a lot of dead rubbers, but when you effectively have two that are cut adrift, the only dead rubber each day is a match between those. Yep. Gary Car 50. Well, they become spo spoilers like, I mean, Rich, well, not necessarily yesterday, but, well, it was yesterday. This man could have. Spoiled. 16. Charles Robert Thornton's hopes of topping Group A. He had two darts at tops and one at double six off of one, two, six to do just that. Might stay there. Surprised he didn't, you know. Agreed. Looks so inviting. 50. Got to do a car 40. Really disappointing start to the match from Barstow, this. This is fourth consequitive troublous visit Stafford. in the lag and he's paid the price commentators curse jinxie mason full effect 
21 darts he had there. Not one Second mate, Gary to third first. Game on. Gary was the 7 to 2 dog. Staying on the canine theme for Staffy. 43. Well, just thinking about those stats that were produced by our excellent producer here at the Super Series, Stefan. I'm not going to put him to work even further, but I would be quite interested to know how many of those matches were in an evening session because it's quite rare we see Chaz Barstow play daytime stuff. Yeah, absolutely. He's, uh does work full-time. Chaz. 100. Be sure he's a, another one of the players in the building trade. 57. I mean, it's... it's Potluck, isn't it? The, the fact that this has been located in Portsmouth, but it's an absolute dream for players like this pair of live local who are able to 100. combine work and darts and fill in gaps sometimes if there ever is. And it, you know, nature is 12 players a week. Sometimes there's going to be someone ill or unavailable and has to pull out at short notice. And these guys, even though here by right, can get a call. Well, Rob Collins being a perfect example, he would. He would finish 83. work and nip home, have a shower, drive here, and sometimes go back to work after playing on a Thursday. 140. I think I'm right in saying that Scott Walters, who's been an excellent player in this, he actually started by that route. He was a, a brilliant local player. Of course, he's played WDF stuff, Challenge Tour stuff, etc. But he, he filled a gap and because he did so Just well, he became a regular. Six. Yep. Double 18. 17. Although we see that 10 and 6 Gary Ilkar, 134. target we were talking about before come into effect. What's the target here? Might be 54. Might tops, now tops. be tops, tops. 140. For the first time this week, Gary he's Ilkar, 36. missed the second tops for that combination. But you made a great point earlier. He's not the kind of player actually seems to suit Game shot on the second leg. two darts in the same target. Nope. Barstow is on target. Instantly breaks back. Having a, a chuckle about something. Third leg Chelsea through first. Game on. Well, Peter Wright in the Premier League last week, those darts he was using, I mean, whatever your opinions are on them. He seems to be hitting the first dart in the treble every time, but then couldn't land a bedfellow. Maybe Gary Stafford's the type of player who should just go treble 20, treble 19, treble 18. One out of them, four right, 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 right on cue. <laughs> yeah. Nine data every leg. <laughs> could, 99. Could go for the, the ultimate nine, three, one, six, sevens. Yeah, that's the one thing I would like to see, actually, a little, a little bit more here in the uh, Super Series. And I know that, you know, people are betting on matches and stuff, and the players have got no obligations to perform to the best of their ability, but when 97. you're already through or already out, I think maybe just trying some spectacular stuff, it just, that's the kind of thing that gets me going, you know, the three balls that Simon Whitlock oh, did. That was it's remarkable. To me, it's totally legitimate. 100. And it was to win the match, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, because you could argue, couldn't you? People say, oh, they shouldn't do that because people are betting on it, blah, blah, blah. One well, it's the sport that's first and foremost, what the player wants to do. It's like a footballer taking like a, a Penenka penalty and saying he shouldn't do that because he's not giving himself the best chance to score. It's up to you entirely what you go for. If you want to go bull six, bully a Chaz, you do it, pal. <laughs> 100. Well, last week we've seen that incredible bull 18 bull, didn't we? 58. Gary Ocar, 135. We'll see the ball come into play here. See the ball hit here. He did to hunt down the treble after finding it. 75. Charles Ocar, 48. Maybe a little bit closer to the, the treble than he would have intended, but no trouble on the double. And it's 2 1 to Barstow. Now, nothing wrong with his finishing here. Two from three for Barstow. Gets the hold. Four for Gary, the third one. first. Him on. 
And just a reminder of where we are, if you are just joining us, Matt Clark has won all three of his matches so far. A 4-1 win against Neil Duff just before the break there, following victories against the bottom two, Gary Stafford and John Nelson, who are yet to win. Sam Kankett and Neil Duff have won two out of three. 140. Foster, if he wins here, will have the same record when all have played three matches. Sixty. Are we seeing Charles Barstow just starting to go through the gears? Yeah. One hundred and twenty-five. backed up with a one twenty-five. Ninety-three. More remarkable. The three balls that Whitlock hit in that Euro Tour. The following Tuesday, playing in the local comp. Forty. And did it in a semi-final and hit it again. Yeah, that competition run by our producer Stefan as well. A lot of players end up going and playing it for extra practice. Yep. At the Forty. Bittern Park Social Club, Southampton. As Barstow himself, a regular, as is Gary Stafford. Have you played one in that one yourself? 40. No, I played in the one, the Phoenix, down here in Portsmouth. Yeah, that's the Waterlooville one, isn't it? Yes. Actually, Simon Whitlock's hometown now. Or has been since he moved across. 100, Chasio Car 56. I think it was their finals night last night, wasn't it? Yeah, do we know who won? We'll find out. Chas Barstow wants Game tops, and he's on course play. to win Chaz this Barstow. one now. Kind of a similar feel to the previous match. Neil Duff winning the first leg of that one, then losing the rest. Stafford won the first leg of this one and has lost the rest so far. Fifth leg, chance to do the first. Darts Game used on. to wrap up the last three legs. And he has the darts here and starting well. Piles in a a max, as Matt Clark did in the fifth leg of that contest against Neil Duff. 85. 80. Oh, still with a PB here at the 41 Super series. It was 117.88. Staggering. And I have just had confirmation. 81. That the winner was at the Phoenix Club in Waterlooville, Simon Whitlock. <laughs> and he does live and breathe darts, doesn't he? You know, yeah. can go for playing for One out of half 40. a million in the World Chancellor Championship. To 600 pounds he won last night. And on a, a normal week, whatever the, the prize fund is there, it's not about the cash for him, it's about the winning. I, I can't think of too many other sports where you see one of the biggest names in their sport playing in a in a local knockout. But all credit to him. Doesn't expect or demand any special treatment. He... Sixty-five, Chasu Car twenty. No, exactly. Well, Stafford leaves one seventy just in case. Being shot but the, the case is closed. Chas Barstow, a four-one win of the pair know each other well and I'm sure that Gary Stafford has seen that side of Chaz Barstow a fair few times as well four out of six on the doubles the key stat for him he hit four Gary Stafford missed four at the outer ring and Barstow takes his tally of points to four joining Neil Duff and Sam Kankit in the slipstream of the league leader the unbeaten Matt, Matt Clark coming next it is Neil Duff. He takes on bottom of the table, John Nelson.
This is the Lotus Super Series. One hundred and eighty. It is available six days a week, 50 weeks of the year, the Motors Super Series. It is the tournament that keeps on giving in the world of darts. And you can be a part of the fun here. It's the Darty Party in Pompey every Saturday evening. Tickets are free of charge and they're available via dartshop.tv. Why don't you come down and enjoy an intimate and unique darting experience? Certainly one for the bucket list. Before the break, we saw Chaz Barstow get the better of Gary Stafford by four legs to one, doing so with an 89.45 average. Four out of six on the doubles to complete victory for him. Next up, Neil Duff looking to come back from that defeat to Matt Clark. He takes on our ADC qualifier for the week in John Nelson and watching this one. It's Chris Squared. Thank you, Henry. I could have put that better myself. Here we go. John Nelson taking on Neil Duff. Yeah, do join us though. Saturday night. Why not? A bit of a, a birthday bash here at the Super Series and you are all invited if you can get to Portsmouth or you live in and around the area. We are uh, on London Road, the Modus Live Lounge, North End area. Do have a look for us. Tickets just need to be booked so we know to expect you, but they are free of charge. Dartshop.tv, the place to be, and you might even get a selfie with myself, Chris Mason and Henry, but, you know, add and remove people as you wish. Yeah, formerly the grapes and Formerly, the church is a beautiful building and a great experience. Get yourself down here. First leg is John to throw first. Well, Game on. Neil Duff here needs to react after that previous game performance. 140. You never know with Nelson, though, do you? I mean, we've seen those wins he's had against Robert Thornton. Problem for me, for, for John Nelson, is that it just seems to happen in two-leg bursts. Yes. I say it's it's very much all or nothing on the finishing. It's Six either eight. a combination, two or three dart shot that he pins instantly, or he tends to chase them around. We've talked about different themed weeks. If we had a sort of old Masters format, it'd be a danger, wouldn't he? Yeah. Yeah, best of three legs per set, of course. 85. That's definitely one that would would work, of course, and would make things interesting from a betting standpoint as well, wouldn't it? Yeah, unpredictable. 41. That format is still intact for the world's senior masters. It's one of my favourite events I've ever commentated on because every leg is important. 121. Just the potential for comebacks as well, isn't it? He needs a max here to come back in the leg. There's two of them. Lots of room. 135. On John Nukar, 95. Well, options here. Game shot on the first Executed leg. expertly. Yeah, and there's an example of that. Finishing in two. 14 dart. Second leg, Neil, to throw first. Game on. Ninety-seven. By the way, congrats if you followed my advice in the last one. The and money shot minus 2.5 51 a little bit concerned after leg one in that one with gary winning it in 20 darts but the response was quality from barstow 16 17 15 and 13 the darts used in each 45 of the four legs he reeled off again an average of around that 90 mark yeah well it's created that divide 59. hasn't it in the league table where you've got two players who've lost all three of their matches and then the top Four 
six points and then three on four. And he'll duff one of those three. Matt Clark, the man who's unbeaten so far. One hundred and eighty. But he's going to play Chaz Barstow in a couple of games' time. But again, Barstow, another one of those that 96. really likes to get on with it. Going to have plenty of thinking time. 99. Good response. It also creates a situation, though, where your matches against those bottom two become must win Neil because you expect 80. your rivals to beat them. Four pointers, didn't they? Mm. Double 10. Game well, shot on the 14 second dart line. hold Neil from Nelson. The response is identical. A 14 dart hold with an 80 checkout for Neil Duff. Third leg, John to throw first. Game on. Yeah, good standard early exchanges in this one. Already seen a 180 100. duff now, a couple away from bringing up the century of maximums at the Super Series. Hunting down the treble here. 45. Never really understand that. He had two darts blocking that then and still resisted the switch. 100. You do have a strange sort of approach, Neil Duff, when you watch him 100. walk up to the hockey from the sort of, if you look at like the board camera, for example, so you're watching him head on, it almost looks like he's aiming away from the 38. board. Pointing his body almost, so you see, to the left of the board. Yeah, it's, it's quite. I not really noticed that before. 60. I think it's more like head position, and and actually his arm is dead straight in front of it. Yeah. Um, it's like when you watch Whitlock, it's it's almost like it comes in. 60. Like on like a you, sight. Yeah, you almost imagine like a little radar with a yeah a sighting aim. Crosshair in there. Yeah. But then when he hits the bullseye, all the blood comes down like 60. the James Bond opening sequence. Yeah, just interesting. I mean, again, it's one of the things that's fascinating, intriguing 95. about this game. That no two players throw the same way. No two players stand the same way. Oh, they have all their own little idiosyncrasies, don't they? It's like with Gary 100. Anderson, who John puts Yukar, his foot over the hockey first before dropping it down. He has the little double toe tap. Well, he's pretty much straight on first. Front 68. foot pointing forward, you get other players, Neil Duff, almost side on. Yep. Bill Taylor used to be perfectly side on, didn't he? Yep. 96, John Ricard, side 40. Foot to the hot to the hockey. Tops for Nelson. Game shot on the third leg, the John Nelson. is immaculate from both. One out of one for Duff, two out of two for Nelson. Bit of an examination here for Neil Duff. Neil to throw first. Would be a, Him on. a disaster to lose here, of course. Because then the top two can gap him. 45. Fifty eight. Yeah, well, John Nelson, if he loses this match, I mean that's all his life's used up, isn't it? We're not gonna see him at finals night, definitely player going through having lost the first 16. four is unheard of yeah yeah he's in a in a world of trouble then we'll apply to one out of gary them, stafford in the next game when he takes on sam kankit good welsh talent of course the nature of this tournament is that we are in a fixed 96. position, but I'm very much on the uh, supporter of the campaign to have more darts tournaments around the UK, other than in, in England, Ireland, Scotland, Wales. And listen to a, a really good interview actually with Matt Porter explaining some of the reasons why that the venues haven't presented themselves yet. Always very honest about 100. you know they would if, car, if the right opportunity came, but I think there is gaps there for people to put on. A show? Yeah, certainly certainly in Ireland. 
north and southern, and certainly in Scotland, there's lacking big events. Well, look, if Robert Thornton wins this at World Seniors for a third time next year, then surely he can choose where they put an event. One hundred. Well, we had that John conversation with him last night, and I think it's something that would go down very well north of the border, a seniors event. 60. Neil Vukar, 100. Now Neil Duff would like one in Northern Ireland. Mega tops, tops. That was the intention, but he 40. could be John in a 32. whole heap of trouble here, Neil Duff. Lost his last match 4-1 to Matt Clark. That might be a saviour for Duff because... John Nelson's having he's to wander all way. around. Wow. But well, he found a spot to stand in. He found a spot to aim at, and he hit that spot. Duff in a spot of bother. Well, he was two from two on the like doubles. John's to first. He Game missed a, a couple of darts there. Effectively. Found the double in his turn. 80. Well, you see that Neil Duff... He hasn't missed a dart at double, you know, in his last two matches. Problem is, he's only had one in each of them. One he's mustard when he gets a go. Well, Neil Duff fires in his 99th 180 in the Modus Super Series. How about his 100th? In a nine dart leg. One hundred and eighty. Good call. There it is a century of one eighties. Ninety six. Neil Carr one hundred and forty one. A landmark maximum for Neil Duff. And now he's looking for the nine, but he can't find the treble nineteen. 89. Great attempt. Especially considering the position he finds himself in in this match. Yeah, his back is against the ropes firmly. 90. The other car, 52. Hit straight back with an 11 darter. Tops. 80. shot on the fifth leg. Well, he hits. No nine darter, but you won't mind. It is a break of throw, and particularly when he's already seen John Nelson pin that 95 in two. Six leg like Neil to throw first. Game on. Interesting uh, use of equipment for Neil Duff as well. He's, he used Joe Cullen darts, didn't he, to win the. 55. To win the WDF World Championship. And then this year, Joe Cullen brought a new set of darts out with a bit more aggressive grip, and Duff likes them as well. 21. Bit of yeah, a Joe, I... Joe Cullen fanboy. <laughs> yeah, I tried the. Forerunner to these darts down in Southampton. And and absolutely stunning. Such a well balanced neutral dart. One hundred and eight. Unbalanced about that, Max. Probably should be coming down here to start, and he hasn't. And in this position, those kind of mistakes can be costly. One hundred. Is it? Turned out he only hit one treble, but had he hit two there, he still wouldn't have left a finish. 60. Uh, 140 and waiting. Neil Duff on 206. Needs a treble, you would think. Gets 96. one. 96. John Ricard, 140. Well, it's uh, the perfect position, really. Perfectly poised. Needs two trebles. Duff needs one. No guarantee. He'll take out the 110. 100. And Neil Nelson leaves top. What a fine dart that was. Yeah, that double 16, didn't he, with his final dart? Is he going to stay there? He had to, didn't he? Yeah. It was 50. perfect. Neil John Yukar, 40. I think Neil Duff's decision making is what's costing him here. Game it's an aspect the of the game. John Maybe Nelson. we don't talk about enough, but when Duff watches back and reflects, that could be something he thinks about. However,. Let's take nothing away from Nelson, because look at that, 92.35. That's the high end of the performance as he's produced this week. Four out of six on the doubles as well. A nice 95 finish in there. He was very, very good value for that victory, and he 
takes himself off the bottom of the table by picking up his first points in the group. Can Gary Stafford do the same? He takes on Sam Kankit after this short break. Welcome back to the Road of Super Series, where we have seen a victory for John Nelson against the reigning WDF world champion Neil Duff by four legs to two. Doing so for his most impressive performance of the week, 92 average and four out of six in terms of the doubles. Duff, despite three matches of that match and a 90 average himself on the wrong end of the scoreline. Good quality encounter, that one. And we're looking forward to another one here as Gary Stafford takes on Sam Kankit in the company of Mace and Murph. Thanks, H. Yeah, he PB performance from John Nelson last time out. Should give him plenty of confidence going forward in the rest of this Group C. Don't forget, we will also be starting Group B this evening. Should be just around about the time the Premier League comes to a conclusion this evening. 10 p.m. on Sporty Stuff TV or you're outside of the UK on our Modus Super Series YouTube channel. If you're watching there, welcome along to the action. Pleasure as always to have you along. Make sure you subscribe if you've not done so already. And give us a give us a little thumbs up and don't forget to hit that alert bell and you'll get a notification every time we go live. And every time first we have he's done, he through first. new shoulder content. performance that last time out wasn't it by John Nelson a personal best performance yeah he's had it in his locker hasn't he all week he showed signs hasn't yeah. he just not been able to well, as we said put four legs together yeah. really but he did on that occasion it wasn't a, a bad performance either from Neil Duff he was two out of three on the doubles 58. 318 is a near 91 average yeah although still even in many he had a 13 data and a 14 data uh, John Nelson in that one, the other two legs, 18 and 19. 45. So even though it was a good performance, low to mid 90s average, a couple of legs there where he could have been vulnerable. Yeah. Well, he wasn't, he wasn't punished. 140. And Kankit. Well, two out of his three matches today. Currently occupying second place on leg difference to Charles Barstow. 
So we've got Matt Clark on six, and then three players on four. From Nelson with that win. And that's the beauty of those ADC qualifiers. 53. A, a proper amateur player getting the opportunity to play the current WDF world champion and gets a, a win over him. Yeah, and some people might look at this and look at last week where the ADC qualifier 95. didn't really perform to the best. But then look at other weeks. Look at Adam Warner who went on to win the week, invest that money in Q School, got through Q School, now has a tour card and will play on the Euro Tour. Adam Mould won his week here as well. well. Look how close Conan Whitehead went. He went. He was in that situation where had he not played on the final day, he would have picked up a card. Yeah. That's another system that needs tweaking, Some in my opinion. One it is, and, and a bit, yeah, it's, it's a difficult one, isn't it? Because either way, you'd be taking the risk for Whitehead himself, because you couldn't know that if you knew that you, if you played, you Yadier could Yadier only Gar lose, 78. then you wouldn't play, would you? No. Do you, do you like my... Hang on, let's just watch this. Game oh, the first leg. Gary 17 darter. My idea of um, four days of Q school, four winners. There's four tour cards. So there Sam was 29 Game available. On. The next 25 go to the top 25 in the challenge tour order of merit. 100. Yes, to 90% agree with it. I've been a long time advocate of most of the places on tour being filled by the challenge tour. I'd even like to see an almost relegation and promotion system 16, where yeah. the pro tour players that fall off go immediately back into the challenge tour to have the best chance of getting their tour card back after one season. Yeah, and they get a whole season, so they're, they're getting a big sample. Yeah. And it also would help to solve the problem of entries at the challenge tour because you could cap those at one, two, eight, two, five, six, whatever yeah. you wanted. And you have to finish in a certain position at Q School to get on the challenge tour. Agreed. Um, the one sort of little thing that I might change maybe is still give a few more places so maybe the daily winners at Q school and then the top three in the order of merit for Q school as well because actually they've probably performed better than the daily winners and deserve it maybe more but still the weighting should be for me, massively towards the challenge to arrive yeah. than Q school well, they, they, they got the ideal opportunity like I say with a, a whole season on that challenge tour that should be Rewarded. And yeah. we, we always hear about commitment to the to the system. Well, those players who are spending thousands to play on the Challenge Tour are not particularly well. They're rewarded the top eight with a place in the UK Open, but and maybe even look, look, say say there are twenty nine places. That's just a random number we've picked out of the air. It's different, isn't it, on different years? But say there are maybe even not guarantee the top twenty in the Challenge Tour, and then go right. We're going to offer thirty seven. Four to six places from Q School. Plus, we're going to offer a card to the ADC number one, the Asian Tour number one, etc. So you've got those feeder tours from around the world coming in. Because as it stands 45. at the moment, whoever Sorry, wins the, the Australian Tour, for example, the DPA Tour, would still have to go to Q School and start from scratch, even though he's won a circuit over the course yep. of the year. Seventy-eight. Miss chance for Kanki. Now, are we seeing? And I, and I think it would make the Challenge Tour more prestigious. Yeah. No dart of the bull. Come back to that in a moment. Kankit looking to level things up. We want your opinions as well. Do tweet at no, that MSS dart. You can get me at Chris Murphy one eighty on Twitter. Double eight. Game shot on the second leg. Sam Kankit. And it is all square. Yeah, I d and I do think it's sort of about time. I think that Q School served a good purpose for a good number of years. Well, I don't think it's, first. But I think the need for Q School would still be there because you could not become a PDC professional without qualifying through either Q School or 100. an overseas affiliate to a route. Because I do think it is a bit unfair for say the Australian players to having to fly all the way over yeah. to take a gamble on on Q score like when they've proved themselves to be the best player in Australia yeah very similar with the CDC as well isn't it same kind of thing and and also you would offer those positions if they were declined if they were, look, we're then going to give an extra place to the challenge to it or we're going to give an extra place to Q score rankings but yeah I think, I think this 
I don't think you would lose out on too yeah. many Q and, school entries because no. they're going to play to get on the challenge tour, which is what a lot of them do anyway. Exactly. You see a lot of them just play the play the one game, so so they can play challenge tour for the following year. With a bias hat on, keep it as it is because it means that here in the Super Series we get some players that are probably professionals, really. 100. Yeah. Well, we, we did have that conversation regarding allowing some of the tour card orders, especially the, the lower rank ones that are 99. finding it tough. I think we've seen the advantage of, of playing in this and then going to Q school and then going forward. And I think it would be a, a great opportunity to well, those that are Foxy, not quite cutting it just to get some extra experience to to take back on tour. Yeah. Even if even if you said the I don't know ninety seven to hundred and twenty eight. So I understand they gotta protect their brand, but you can get one of them players who's just got a tour card for two years, they come over to this. 43. Win their week. Got to do a Win Champions one. Week. It's, you know, best yeah. part of 30 odd grand in the bin. Strengthening they, the brand, aren't they? Yeah, they go back to the back on tour with confidence, experience. 56. And, some, and some money 64. in the bank. And status take, as well. Yeah, yeah. And, and it takes the pressure off a bit. Well, pressure on here for Sam Kankit, but you wouldn't know it from that first start. Game shot on the third leg. And you Sam wouldn't know Kankit. it from the second one either. He takes control of the match. Of course, we fall under the auspices of the DRA as well, so there's no problem there. Fourth leg, Sam to two first. Game on. Well, my final thought on it would be that eventually, after two or three years of that such a system, you probably are going to have the best 128 players in the world on the Pro Tour. Yeah, which surely should be the aim. Exactly that. 100. Kank it on target. Great last few visits from him. A fabulous 64 checkout in two darts, followed by a maximum. 59. Well, our players that we've had here at the Super Series that have themselves admitted that they got through Q School after the day of the darting life and then completely bombed 100. on the pro to it. Yeah. Well, it's, it, it, it's, it's, it's two extreme levels. The, to go from... You know, just sort of being a, an occasional challenge tour player or a county player to rocking up at Q school, getting a tour card and then being thrown into the to the lion's den. I mean, you know, you can walk into MVG one day, Gary Anderson the next, Dirk the day after that. You know, it, and it could just be relentless and completely destroy your game. One hundred. Yeah, and as the strength in depth gets better and better, I think you know, see, darts is still actually quite a young sport professionally, isn't it? Oh, yeah, still developing, but you know, and the PDC will and have always developed it and have always made these changes. And 55. that one maybe is pending. Who knows? Well, it is a it, it's a, a constant evolution, isn't it? They they don't they don't sort of sit on their hands if game show the fourth play. Sam Kankad standing three out of five now. Uh, Ton plus out, yeah. If they if they see an issue where things can be tweaked, they're the, and if they get it wrong, they're the first to, to put their hands up and say, right, we're gonna we're gonna change this. If they got it to first game on, and they don't, yeah, they don't rush things, and that was something that Matt Porter was saying in that interview. I think he did with Phil Bars at Online Darts. Um, but they will listen. They listen to 43. fans. They listen to players. They'll. I'll take on board feedback, and the evidence of that is with the new World Cup of Darts format. Well, I've been campaigning for that for years. Constantly. Matt, make, make the World Cup pairs. Make the World Cup pairs. No. <laughs> 125. Yeah, sign of a good business, though, isn't it? They, they won't tell you what they're going to do. They'll do it, and then they'll announce it. Yep. A lot of people tell you what they're going to do, and it never happens. 85. I was going to be Prime Minister, apparently, when I was at primary school. 100. Had, I wish you had a bit. <laughs> 
What a nation! Well, this is complete dominance from Sam Kankit now. Second one eighty. Well, the, the last three matches have, have followed a, a similar pattern, haven't they? With the underdog 52. winning the. Well, not necessarily the underdog in the the opening match between Neil Duff and Matt Carr. Though that 82. was pretty much a pick'em game for me, anyway. But Neil won the first leg, lost the next four. In our last match, Gary won the first leg against Chaz, and then Chaz reeled off four. Gary won the opening leg here, and it's 47. looking like Some require 96. Chaz is going to reel off the next four. Triple 20. Doesn't have to stay, can make use of elsewhere. 76. Gary O'Carr was 134. I'm going to give you one of my Matherick moves again now, Mace. Dance um, moves or? Uh, 76. I, I do like treble 16. Yeah. 28. Some car 20. Not, not against it. Well, double 10 Being shot on the match. is the Sam way Kankit. to win it for Sam Kankit. And Gary Stafford has that familiar smile on his face when the match started off in promising fashion. But ended in a nightmare once again and Sam Kankit reeled off four straight legs to leave Stafford languishing at the bottom of the table without a point to his name after four. Kankit has actually just gone top of it but Matt Clark does have a game in hand and he will play it next against Chaz Barstow. Welcome back to the Modus Super Series, where before the break we saw Sam Kanki get the better of Gary Stafford by four legs to one, doing so at 87 and a half average, two maxes to his name, and that 106 checkout. Next up for us, it is Matt Clark up against Chaz Barstow in terms of the league table. Matt Clark has been perfect up to press in Group C. He's won all three of his matches so far. He's up against Chaz Barstow, who could go level on points with Clark with a win here in the company of Mace and Murph. Thanks, H. Yes, Matt Clark. 
Three matches played. Three wins. They have come as follows. A 4-2 win over John Nelson with an 85. And a 4-2 win over Gary Stafford with an 83. And a 4-1 win, a big win over Neil Duff. 50% on doubles in that one. So three matches played, only four legs dropped. But this, this is a big one. Yeah, it is. And if it's Barstow that wins it, then you're going to have three players tied at the top. And Neil Duff's defeat to John Nelson is going to be what costs him being part of that equation. Sam Kankit currently on top. Same points as Matt Clark. Same leg difference as Matt Clark, but has played one match more. So Clark looking to remain First unbeaten. Matt's is through first. Barso looking to really shake Game things on. up. It would be great, wouldn't it, for, for Kankit if Clark could win here, really. Because he could make sure he ends a day in a top two spot. And potentially... 28. With a four-point lead over the... Well, he's, he's actually... His last game is against Matt Clark, so he could see them both on eight points. 134. Uh, Barstow and Duff, I think, have to play each other, don't they? So one of them would get to six, but it would be tough for whoever lost that match. Yeah, well, up next is Stafford against Nelson, the bottom two, and then it will be Barstow against 85. Duff, and then Kankit against Clark. Having said that, if those games go the other way, suddenly John Nelson could be in with a shout. <laughs> He hasn't used all his lives yet. He's still got a chance, but he... We could see all the players... Clark loses this. Barstow gets to six. If Duff beats Barstow, he gets to six. Yes, one of Clark or Kankit would then go to eight, but Nelson, by beating Stafford, would actually be two points off five. second place at the end of the day. Doesn't have a nickname, but we could call him the cat <laughs> if he manages to come through this. 100. Yeah, I think some of the other players might be calling him something a little bit stronger. <laughs> Barstow, though, in a strong position in he, the opening leg. He's already dealing with the, the pace of this better than, than Neil did. 99. Shazio Car 130. No need to stay there. Treble 10. He'll stay there, though. 90. Leaves tops. But 1-0 against Matt Clark has been a dangerous lead today. <laughs> 57. Chazio Car, 40. So he doesn't want to rest on his laurels if this does go in. 3 shot on the first leg. Charles Barstow. He'll be more than happy with that. A 15 dart breaker throw. And has an opportunity to double Same his lead with the darts the first. here. Game on. Now, all's well in the world of Barstow so far, but Matt Clark has reeled him in today. 83. Just looking through his early fixtures which Mace ran through at the start of this match he beat John Nelson 4-2 and then beat Gary Stafford so he sort of 100. had the, the nice run didn't he yeah the nice opening two matches no disrespect to those players but they were battered and bruised in group A 49 yeah, I mean, their, their confidence must have, have been low but it was it was interesting to, to hear John Nelson yesterday and he had he had the perfect attitude. Fresh start tomorrow. And it has to be said that in parts today, it's some of the best starts we've we've seen of him so far this week have, have been today. In fact, one out of forty. That personal best performance against Neil Duff, where he averaged 92.35, four out of six on the doubles and one one eighty. Sixty. Well, there's a there's an argument to say that Lee Cox, who finished on twenty two points, might be feeling worse than Nelson. And Stafford, who were a long way off that mark in, in Group A. However, speaking to Lee Cox, I think he seemed to have adopted the right attitude as well, and I expect him to to get through Group B. Well, if he plays, if he plays anywhere near to the levels we saw 
Forty-two. Across the three days, where Monday and Tuesday, of course, he had ton topping averages and a personal best of his own, one hundred and three point six six. Yeah, and then Tuesday into Wednesday included a seven-match winning streak, ended by Robert Thornton, the man who ultimately would pip him at the post. Eighty-one. Did see the attempt of the 1 4 1 at the end of a nine darter from Neil Duff earlier on in a leg that included Mario Kart his 99 and 100th maximums at the Super Series. That would have been a perfect way to have rounded off his 100 180s. He couldn't do it. He got that bit. He didn't get that bit. Double 12 for Superman. Superman he can. Second leg, Mark Clark. Wow. Neil Duff will be thinking, could you lend me that one? Back-to-back <laughs> well, -back 15 darters. Third leg match, the match. Field first. Game on. And it's a break back, isn't it? Again, yeah. player takes the first leg off him and he just Responds. finds a way. That's a great way of putting it as well, responding, because what we've seen, 96. I think, from some of the other players in their demeanour is reacting rather than responding. Yeah. Well, they're reactive in a in a negative sense. 57. We talk about James Wade, probably the one of the, the most reactive players in in world darts, past and present. He will he will do what's necessary. Well, Matt Clark, if you were sat across the table with him and two cards face down, you'd have no clue what hand he had, would you? He's no. Doesn't that, give anything away. No. He has got the proper poker face. And, and again, he, he gives nothing away, so there's nothing for you to feed on. Yeah, routine. It's all about routine for him. And, you know, we talk about the fact that he is a slower player, but he, he has a rhythm. It's a slow one, but it's his. 95. Very rhythm. Is what got him oh so close to that twenty thousand pounds winners check. Mario Car one hundred and seventy. Well, we've just seen the one four one from Clark. No need for him to go for the bullseye, but he might be tempted should he get a couple of treble twenties. In a way, sometimes missing with one of the darts is actually a, a good thing because 60. you can't get lured in. Missed with all three of them on that occasion. Busy weekend of darts ahead, of course. Saturday Mario night here, it's finals night. You can join us free of charge. Just register your name at dartshop.tv and it will be left on the door. The doors open at 6.30. Of course, this weekend it's, well, a marathon in Hildesheim 90. in Germany with two days of challenge tours, then a couple of days of Players Championships, and then on Tuesday, two further European Tour qualifiers. 100. Mike Lucar, 20. Yeah, that's the, it's the week to be one of those players who's at the top of the Challenge Tour and getting on the Pro Tours, isn't it? Yeah. Really Each make hay. Matt leg. Clark making Matt Clark. hay here, and I hate to say it, Chris, but yeah, maybe Chaz Barso did deal with the pace better than anybody else, but it only lasted a leg. And only the first leg. <laughs> His performance. Well, so he went from a 15 darter, didn't he, in that first leg? Averaging 100. To not leaving a finish after 15 in the last leg. And only being on 167 when Clark went out in 15 in the one before it. Hence the 23 point drop in the averages. Forty-two. No maxis yet from Barso either, 80. a man who's hit more than 350 in the last couple of years. And if you think it's easy... 81. Get a dartboard set up. If you've got one set up, go now and tweet me when you've hit one. And I'll read it out next Wednesday. <laughs> 58. 
not on Twitter anymore, I've told you. <laughs> It is a good social media content, isn't it, Dart? So Tim Vine, I think, he's been doing a few challenges where he'll stand at the board and say, right, I'm going to stay on until I've hit three balls. Yeah, I've, I've met, met Tim a, a few times. He actually came to the World Seniors, didn't he? I've seen, I've seen him down at the, the World Championships as well, down at Ali Pali. He is absolutely darts mad, isn't he? Yeah, and some people think that I, uh, I like a pun. I mean, he is relentless, isn't he? Not fit to lace his boots in that department. I actually think he played in a, a sport release event and his nickname was the Pun Away Train. <laughs> yeah, he's got he's got an amazing mind, doesn't he? I did I actually posed the question, how do you how do you sort of write a gag? how does it start? Where does it Mark come from? If there's anything like that, it's just a, a unique ability. Can't tell a good gag, never mind, right one. Yeah, his brother, of course, Jeremy Vine. He was one of the stops when I, I mentioned earlier, Valenciaro the day 70. after she beat Ted Evans. Dropped in on his radio show as well. Oh, could he? He can't, and that gives Clark the initiative, the advantage and the chance to break again. Yeah, this is for pretty much game, set, and match, you would think, because he's going to get the darts in the next, isn't he? Biggest moment in the match. 16. Charles what 65. does Barstow do here? We had the 65 discussion earlier today. He could go for the ball and hope he misses it. Well, he has, by a massive march. Could go for it again if he really wanted to, but it's tops. Game and that is a big play. moment. Chaz big Marshall. miss from Matt, big hit from Chaz. And you could hear the come on from Chaz Barstow, fully aware how important that was. That two missed Fifth starts at to first. double game 16 on. for 3-1. Will that come back to haunt Matt Clark? And this is uh, the final of our fourth round of fixtures today. We will have our last three matches, which will no, take us to the halfway stage in this group. Gary Stafford against John Nelson, we think. A dead rubber, but Nelson may have other ideas. Then it's Barstow versus Duff and Kankit versus Clark as the top four, the real contenders in this group all 59. face off. And of course, those fixtures reverse tomorrow, so we but we'll get the the dead rubber out of the way. Yep. Fifty four. When it could be meaningful matches right to the finish. We have the prospect here, of course, of finishing the day with the top three all locked. Eighty five. On eight points, if Barstow can get a win here. Yeah, and that would be a bit of a what disaster a for Neil Duff, think... wouldn't it, if that were to happen? Well, oh, he'll be two wins away from that. At least one of the top two qualification spots. It's only the top two from this group that go through. We had a feeling this one was going to be a little bit gnarly. It doesn't sound like a lot, does it? But it's two wins in five matches. One of them is going to be against the player you're chasing, but you're also relying on them losing another match, and then the leg difference being right. So, four point gap going into a last day of the group is a big one to bridge. Well, which is why, if you don't win 65. it, you want to finish in the top three in Group A, ultimately to get into Group B, which gets underway tonight, ten o'clock on the usual channels, because it's three from five that go through tonight. Yeah, you've actually got. One hundred and twenty. Mathematically, about twice. Yeah, twice as good a chance. Sixty percent in that group. Thirty-three percent in this group. Tops for Barstow. It was really. I mean, Mario we've been Carl calling 40. Clark the grinder, but Barstow's really ground this out, hasn't he, to try and turn it around. 
and but, that would have turned it around. If that tops would have gone in, he'd have led 3-2, and he then would have been thrown for the match himself. Wow. Just managed to divert from its intended destination. Game shot on the fifth leg. Mark Ball's Clark. well that ends well. Clark puts it right. And that's one of the occasions where the opponent might have been better not watching that because he would have, <coughs> would have had no idea that the first dart was Six leg so horrendously the placed. Well, there's, not, there's nothing worse than getting last darted anyway, but when you see such a wild dart into the five, 100. and then double 16 going in the last, oh, well, Chaz himself last darted Clark in the previous leg on that 65. And his dart at the ball was equally as far away as Clark's dart at tops. And it, it must affect you mentally. I mean, then, then you see him do that. Yeah. I'm not, you know, I've never been there. You have. I, some would say, you know, it doesn't really matter what they hit, but... Oh, nonsense. To, yeah, <laughs> to, to see that dart go in that five for him to clean it up and then kick off with a 180. Must yeah. be in your head it right. I'm, oh, I can't win this match. Your head's in the shed. Isn't that so what you feel? You think, I just no matter what I'm doing here, it's just not happening. I mean, he's just missed tops on that 107, and it's a completely different game. 97. Clark in command again, and he has been. Throughout the day, he could yet go through the card. We're talking about the possibility of players being 84. tied. Well, he could be clear. Yep. Ten, po 10 points, perfect day. And his final match is against Sam Kankett. Up next, a battle of the bottom two. Gary Stafford against John Nelson. And then one hundred and thirty-four back, back big games in terms of table position. Barstow versus Duff. And then Kankett versus Clark. Well, Barstow just trying to work out what he's got left there. 196 is the answer, so he's going to have to... Bit of treble anyway. 45. Matt Lucan, 90. Six at this. For four from four. Top the table on eight points. Plenty of options here. Double 12. Absolutely clinical. Clark. As he cleans up the match with the best leg of the match, a 12 darter from Matt Clark, an end average of 89.27, a disappointing performance from Chaz Barstow, just 78.97, well below, some 12 points below his Super Series running average, 50% on the doubles, and of course, the highlight there, the 141 out. Well, that completes our fourth cycle of games when we come back. We start our final three matches with Stafford as against Nelson.
Welcome back to the Mode Super Series where Matt Clark has got the better of Chaz Barstow by four legs to two. That rounds off the fourth cycle of fixtures for the day here in Group C. And it is Matt Clark having won all four of his fixtures who is out on top in the Group C table. Sam Kankett keeping close company on six. with Mrs. Duff and Barstow also with two wins apiece from their particular day. Well, next up for us it is the battle between the two players at the bottom of the table. It's John Nelson up against Gary Stafford. Nelson, who picked up a win against Neil Dove early on today, he takes on Stafford, looking to get into the winner's enclosure. And this is going to be watched by Chris Mason and Chris Murphy. Thank you very much, Mr. Henry Russell, Peter Deacon. Doing a fine job as always. And from one Lord to another, Nelson is on the stage. Ready to take on Gary Stafford. More rough and ready, isn't he, Staffy? The Southampton man. Yeah, he is a pretty big fellow as well. Going to be a bit of work for the camera operators in this one. A bit of a little and large affair. But it is Nelson who's made a move. What the victory against Neil Duff that has dented his hopes. But now if he wins this one, all of a sudden he's two points off P2. Yeah, he's put himself right in the mix with that win against Neil Duff. First leg is Charlie to do first. Game on. Of course, these two were in Group A together. So they're more than familiar with each other by this stage. 45. Monday. Gary just got the better of John. 4-3. Forty-four. And then the roles were reversed on. No, it was an identical result on Tuesday. Again, four three for Gary. Sixty. But yesterday. John got revenge, winning 4-2. 59. 58. Well, we're talking about the, uh, the mentality of players just at the end of the previous match. I just wonder what, the, if the, this pair have sort of carved out an unlikely friendship because 59. they've got kind of so much in common, haven't they, this week? It's been the same story for the pair of them. They might almost feel like they're somehow in it together. Yeah. What is on it? Well, there will be some some unity in the practice room between the two, that's for sure. It's a great little position we have here at the Moda Super Series, actually, obviously because the arena is silent during the week. Commentary box is not based in there. We have our own little, uh, well, I call it a room. Henry calls it a suite. One hundred adjacent to the players' practice room. Now, now the one in there has been fairly quiet, hasn't it? But some days, some weeks, it's pretty raucous in there. Yeah, it's certainly rowdy. The only sort of moment we had today was when Duff was on the nine and he missed the the, the eighth dart in the car, sequence, and there was a big ooh from next door. But yeah, we. We tend to hear most of what's going on in there. Game show on what's the going on line. here is Nelson. Nelson. He's back at it. Suddenly he's found his mojo. And he's rising up the table. Break a throw in leg one. Second leg John to do first. Well, he'll certainly, I mean, if he can convert this break of throw and... 57. ...performance so far into a win, he will certainly go into tomorrow with his tail up and he will... Sleep soundly this evening. 85. Knowing that he's put himself somewhat in the mix. Now, folks, don't forget no, about Henry's not. tungsten teaser today. We are celebrating our birthday here at the Super Series this week. Over the last two years, can you name the 14 95. players to have competed in this event and have also been ranked in the PDC top 10? And for a bonus, which one of the 14 was previously ranked as high as world number one? 
at MSS Darts, the place to tweet in. Use the hashtag Modus Memories. Anybody who gets them all right deserves a 59. big pat on the back. Yeah, absolutely. He's giving himself a pat on the back here, John Nelson. 134. This is another good performance. How many do do we think we've got? Well, I say us, the players next door did most of it, didn't they? But 81. John Lucar, 74. I think we're up to 12 that we think are definitely yeah. in there. Yeah, there's a, a couple of ones we've put down that I'm not quite way. sure. I've John got Nelson. A, a question mark against them as Nelson backs up the 17 dart break with a 15 dart hold and a 74 checkout. Further, Gary to throw first. Game Shows on. you what a bit of confidence can do. And there it is. Hashtag Modus Memories. Trip down. Tungsten Memory Lane. 135. For the Super Series. Tweet us in your favourites and your answers to that Tungsten teaser. 99. And we've been... Talking about all the players, the refs, the commentators, and the, the fantastic production team that make it all work here. But biggest thanks, of course, is to you guys for watching. 57. And when we were on our previous YouTube platform, we. 55. We breached the 10 million views within. A matter of months, didn't we? And without that support, 100. We may not be bringing you these pictures. Well, the world changed, didn't it, in 2020? And I know a lot of people, as a result, have continued to work from home and for some reason find it comforting to have 16. me and you chatting away in the background. Yeah, I'm not sure how. Fifty-seven. Gary O'Carr, one hundred and fifty-two. It was sort of the only window available for sport, wasn't it, early on, when we were bringing you our daily competitive action. One hundred. Yeah, and then it just took on a life of its own, and hence the move. Steady on, John. Hence the million pounds in. Prize money per year. 96. Gallio Car 52. Yeah, Mr. Mason has taken his slice of that. Oh, yeah. Might be after some more, as we heard earlier in the show. Hey, Sean, the Stafford. Gary Stafford. After a way back into this one. I want that big big 20 G tech check. That's what I'm after. Four fake John to throw first. Yeah, you've presented Game it a few on. times. It'd be nice, wouldn't it? Just... This is a good question, actually. We offer often ask you a few mischievous ones in this commentary box. If you could pick anybody to present you that check for whatever reason you wish, whether it to be someone you respect or someone who you'd 100. really just like to rub the nose in it, who would it be? Well, I've got a couple of my boss. One hundred. Phil Taylor. And then, if I could win the World Seniors, I'd love to beat Phil in the final. Well, every chance that uh, one of those things could happen. People have said about Phil Taylor that, you know, he's he's got no chance anymore, even in the seniors events. But people 85. forget he did make a couple of finals last year and missed darts to win one of them. Well, the only listen, I, I've never met a player with so much pride as, as Phil and 135. one of two things will happen he will either literally will knuckle down and start putting in the, the hard yards or he'll 59. walk away in which case you might have a short window to, yeah. to beat him Ninety nine. One hundred. 
Gary Hill can't eat you two. Pointed with a ton there. That is down to a doable finish if Stafford misses tops. Getting shot but on the he does not. Gary it's Stafford. all square and Gary Stafford has broken back. Well, incredibly, leg one, a 17 for John. Break a throw, followed by a 15 dart hold. Leg three, this 17 Gary, dart hold. Game on. Followed by a 15 dart break. Anything you can do, I can do. Yep. Ninety-six. Big day of darts, as we mentioned. We are back this evening, ten p.m. We'll see plenty more trebles and doubles hit. No shortage of doubles hit in this match. Tidy, isn't it? And that group looking very tasty tonight. Uh, and we'll do it all again what tomorrow, St. Patrick's Day tomorrow as well. Is it, is it Paddy's Day tomorrow? Wow. You're wearing green. I don't think I've got anything green. Am 96. I purchase something, yeah. It's uh, Richie House and Johnny Haynes, David Davis, who's top of the Welsh ADC ranking, I do believe. Daryl Fitton and Lee Cox, another super tough group. Yeah, we'll work as your uh, personal reminder. St. Patrick's Day, Friday, Mother's Day on Sunday as well. You've probably just got time to order those flowers. I know that because I did mine last night. 100. 57. Gary O'Carr, 112. Oh, just sent me a great message. That after spending three days in that practice room listening to Rob Rickwood telling his stories, I was glad to get on that stage for some peace and quiet. <laughs> Keep up the great work, lads. Double well, top. Great yeah, work from Gary Stafford. Gary Stafford. But well, I'm sure that would get the seal of approval from Iron Mike. And it could prove to be the knockout blow. And, and when so I say knockout blow, I on. mean knockout blow because defeat here kind of well if i'm going down john you're going down with no, me yeah, i'm taking you down with me <laughs> he's throwing him under the bus yeah, great character mike norton it was actually him who was 41. the victim of matt clark's 4-0 victory yep. when he got through to champions week last time yeah, it was him that missed out Mike we'll be back Good to see him back, because he actually had a, quite a big operation, didn't he? Yeah, well, he, he's been back once, hasn't he, and got through to finals night on that occasion, uh, just a couple of weeks ago. And 96. I did ask him, because I, I was kind of expecting some sort of hangover. I said, you know, how are you feeling? And Mike said, I'm like a 19-year-old, so. 96. Obviously done the trick. I bet he doesn't in this weather, laying blocks. Ninety-four. Well, this one looking destined to go to a decider. One hundred and forty. Well, it's either that or Stafford takes out two seventy and six with a miss in the middle from Nelson, and he has to hit a treble in order to do that. Now sixty. John Lucar eighty-eight. It's a six. For Nelson, for 3-3. Three, three. Terrific first start. This could go wrong, you know. Yeah. If he goes for the one and misses, or planted it in the centre, fair play. Again, because I'm rubbish at dart, 17 left, I'm going for a nine, because if I miss, I've not bust. But again, that's, a, that's another great point for beginners John, to 16. think of. Can't bust going either side of the nine. Game shot on the six. He held it all together well Nelson. there. There was a bit of pressure from Stafford, but it's a 17 dart hold. And I think quite fittingly, this one goes to a decider. Both players. Seven to the final leg. Like Gary to throw first. Game on. Almost identical in terms of averages. Yep, same legs. Almost the same average. Would it be the same points 60. at the end of the day's play? Well, the doubling 
It's been fabulous from both, but more so for Stafford, who's three from three, including that 112. 100. Bill Nelson, not too shabby. 50%, three from six. Stafford, yet to score 140 40. or more in this match. Yet to score any points in this group. He's blinked first here. An opportunity. 60. For Nelson to steal the darts. Again, a determination to stay there when maybe. 60. It's more stubborn than determined. Yep. Sometimes you just got to take 45. your medicine, haven't you? Term often used in golf, of course. When you made an error, sometimes just got to swallow. 100. Uh, the, the thing is, in this game, you have to get rid of the odd at some point anyway. So it's all right it's just here. going 60, 60, ton, ton until you get down to a finish. But to leave a double. I'm, st I'm still amazed the amount of players that go 20, 20 and then go for the trouble 19. That, that's still, especially the advances in, in counting over the years. That's it's, it's the, the trouble 17 is the. Is the shot? Yeah, you can be forcing yourself into an extra 40. visit. Can't yes. you? Car one hundred and one. Well, one hundred and one. Six starts at it to join John Nelson on two points, and ensure today's play was not pointless. Yeah, you don't want to see anybody 69. go away pointless. There's a few. What would be pointless answers on that Henry's tungsten teaser? More yeah, I think we've got a few. <laughs> More on that in the uh, in the next match. All will be revealed very, very soon. But Stafford looking for a win. His first win Stafford. of the day. And it comes against John Nelson, a man who he's got used to beating this week. A 4-3 success yet again. And Staffy seals the points without... Missing a single dart at double in the game. A high check out of 112, four out of four on the doubles. And Gary Stafford is bottom of the table, but he ends the day on a high. Now the top four will face off in the final two matches. Kankit takes on Clark, but first it's Barstow against Duff.
Welcome back to the Moda Super Series where Gary Stafford has got the better John Nelson by four legs to three in our 13th match of the day. Well, two more matches for us to go in this afternoon session and they're set up quite nicely, these matches. Duff against Barstow, the victor will move on to six points for Kankit takes on Clark in our finale of the day. So who is going to be the stage star in this Champions Week race? Well, here comes Chris Mason and Chris Murphy to talk you through all the action. Thank you very much, Henry. Yes, it is now crunch time at the top of the table. Neil Duff, while well, the damage was done for him when he was beaten by John Nelson in his last match, having lost his previous game as well. Duff had won his first two. It was all looking very, very good for the WDF world champion. He's on four points, as is Charles Barstow in this group. He was also beaten by... Matt Clark and lost his first match of the day to Sam Kankett, so one of them is going to get cut somewhat adrift. And that it might actually be the case that they're now hoping that Clark goes away and races off with P1, and the three of them, Kankett, Duff, and Barstow, battle it out for P2. First leg, just to through first. Yeah, that's Game potentially on. looking likely. I mean, it's it is a must-win game for both of them, isn't it? This one. Maybe a, a little edgy. 134. But Duff seemed to just hit a brick wall in his last two games. Although saying that, it was a, a super performance from John Nelson. 90. And a rock-solid performance from Matt Clark. You almost want... You, you want your stronger players in your, your middle matches, don't you? Well, this set of matches, the, the two games we're going to see now and then the first two tomorrow could really kind of separate the men from the boys in this group, couldn't it? 16. Yeah, it could uh, paint the landscape, couldn't it? Well, if you get one of these players winning both fixtures, then they're going to be right up there. And if you say get Matt Clark winning both fixtures against you want. Matt, uh, Sam Kanker, then he's going to be as good as through. Yeah, well, he'll be on... 12 points, and that's usually around the, that kind of number, isn't it? Yeah, you'd expect that you'd have to completely collapse and lose every match. And, and heavily. Yeah. Well, they went Barstow 4-6 to six for this one. That was 11-10. to 10. I would probably have played the... 60. Charles Yorker, 36. The 180 market in this one. He took them on at over 2.5 because Just Marstow. Well, potentially this has got six or seven legs in it. Second leg Neil to throw first. Game on. I would think the level the players operate at it would go all the way. Yeah, and also with the lack of consistency that we've seen from the pair of them today, because Duff hasn't started well, Barstow started very well. 57. 14 data, that amounts to an average of 107. But we saw in his previous match, didn't we? He started off with a 15 data and then just completely disappeared within three legs. The average had 60. gone from 100 to 77. Yeah, I think he only had another one or two darts at a double, didn't he, throughout the entirety of the match. 44. We'll be re revealing the answer to our tungsten teaser. The start of our next match, I think. 95. Well, Henry will be. I'm sure he knows it in his mind anyway. But it is the 14 players who've competed here in the last two years. That had been ranked 10 or above in the PDC rankings and for a bonus point. Which one of them was a former world one number one? Forty. Yeah, we won't share them with you because we want to give you as much time as possible to complete your list. But we think between us and the six players in the practice room next door, one hundred. Well, we're girl, up to twelve definites out of fourteen plus three question marks. Have we got them all? I'm not sure we have. And that's without obviously 82. we haven't, haven't cheated. Does your car one hundred and sixty? Had a look on the. Many informative 
websites that give out that kind of information. Oh, hello, tops for the highest finish of the week. Being and in it goes. Leg. Barstow. Barstow backs up the 14 darter in leg one with a 15 dart break of throw and a 160 out. A nice expression of appreciation there from the Neil like Duff with a fist bump. Game on. Because that's got to hurt. He was sitting on 24 at the time when Barstow broke. That's another one, isn't it, for discussion? 100. Hardest checkouts, because we've always had stats for highest checkouts, but for me, well, not for me, <laughs> but not literally for me, but a 160 is easier than, say, 58. a 143. Yeah, yeah, because of the, obviously, limited room, and once you've hit that for a 60, or if the only other option you have, of course, is ball, ball, but um, I think, I think for me, probably a, a one six seven because of the one hundred up down up. Yeah, would parity parity with one six one? Yeah, again, it's it's that similar thing, isn't it? It's up up down up, and the smallest target on the board to, to round it off. Which again, very much like the the difficulty in the one sixty, because sometimes the the room's just not there in the trouble twenty. So obviously the. 170 as well, ending on the, the ball. Well, the iconic 180 call. So Paul Hinks is getting well practiced here. Well, maybe the the 132, the ball, ball, double 16 is also another 64. Real That's toughie. 24. Well, this should be simple. And it he proves to be the case. Barstow, Barstow making it look simple here. And Duff is in danger of getting deleted from contention. Well, this is... This is the kind of play we've become familiar with, with well, Barstow over the, Game on. the last couple of years. And, well, 14, 15, and 13, uh, 160 out in the middle, a max in 95. leg three, three out of four on the doubles and the average. Take a look at that. Yeah, and the difference between the standard set between the two players. 140. Yeah, huge void, isn't it, right now? And Duff scoring hasn't been there all day, and... The fact that his finishing has been okay tells you that it hasn't been all the, all day, but the commentator's curse is well and truly <laughs> intact. That's something that has uh, been consistent at the Moda Super Series. For years. 99. <laughs> this is a good response. They're both in back-to-back. -back. That's three in... One and a bit legs, Murph. What yeah. was it you were... Scoring, yeah. Shocking. <laughs> but he has been really good on double, so sorry, Neil. You're about to miss bucket loads Neil here. 46. Which way does he go? 10. He was in between, wasn't he? Double 18. Double 9. Doesn't want to come inside here. Game Doesn't. Show on the fourth leg. Completes Neil the check Dolphin. out. Keeps himself in contention. And he's just blitzed Barstow in the same way that Barstow blitzed him in the first three legs. Yeah, classy leg, that. This leg chance to throw first. Oh, Neil. <laughs> Game on. It was good, Neil. Not that good. No. You can't win a throw. You can win the leg. But you can't win the throw. I remember the World Cup of Darts talking about different formats. I think it was the first one. And whoever lost the leg had to throw first. Always threw 100. first in the next one. Paul Nicholson, he threw first in every leg of that tournament. One hundred and forty. Or he would have if he didn't have Simon Whitlock as a partner. Now they're a great team back then, weren't they? Australia? Yeah, well they went so close, didn't they? Great to see them actually 140. win it. Albeit without our good friend the asset, Damon Hetter setting up. Didn't Paul and Simon miss multiple darts? Every the single Cup? player on the stage, yeah. Phil yeah. Taylor, 100. Adrian Lewis. All had darts at double. It was finally Lewis, the then world champion, who hit double five. I think Nicholson had missed. One hundred and eight. Tops and tens. Whitlock have missed tens and fives. But this one in no time. Let's see Barstow get down to 81. 140. Oh. Chelsea will count 81. This is pretty much game of the day. Double 12 for a 12. 69. Neil Lucar was Finished with an 21. average of around 112 then, wouldn't he? Yeah, I mean, he's... Still on 110. That will go down whatever happens here because oh, he's only Neil. got 12 left. Neil, you can't go for the ball on dart one. 81. Yeah, not Just where he is. 12. Not where Barstow is. 
Good point, good spot. And he, he doesn't get away with it. Chaz Barstow. Chaz Barstow gets away with the point with the performance of the day in the match of the day, undoubtedly here. It's a 4-1 win for Chaz Barstow, but it's a game that saw the players hit 5 one between them, three of them for the defeated Duff, and Barstow averaged 105.5. Absolutely sensational stuff. Ron Barstow, who took out the 160 as well, the highest checkout we've had on this birthday week at the Modus Super Series where we have one match left to come here in this session and it is between the league leader Matt Clark and the man chasing him, Sam Kankit. So stay tuned back after the break. Hello everyone, welcome back to the Moda Super Series. What a fantastic performance we've just seen there from Chaz Barstow, lighting up the blue touch paper for the week, an average of 105 to get the better of Neil Duff in a scintillating game in our penultimate match of the Group C session. Before we get the last game underway between Sam Kankett and Matt Clark, well, we are ready, the producer is ready, and so it's Tungsten teaser answer time, because earlier on we asked you this, 14 players have competed in the Modus Super Series since its inception two years ago, but have also been ranked in the top 10 of the PDC rankings. There was 14 to choose from. The answers are there on your screen. How many did you get at home? And of course, we did ask you for the Brucey bonus point, who the world number one would end up being as well from that list. Of course, it was Peter One Dark Manly. And what a week he treated us to here at the Live Lounge in Ports for the beginning of 2023. His game against Andy Jenkins, probably one of the highlights of the last couple of years. Maybe not so much for the darts, but for the antics and entertainment. Well, one final game here in Group C. Remember, we're back tonight for Group B action from 10 o'clock this evening on Sporty Stuff TV and the Moda Super Series YouTube channel. It sees Sam Kankit in action. He takes on Matt Clark. This is being watched by Chris Murphy and Chris Mason. Thank you very much, Henry. And yeah, great tungsten teaser. Tremendous trivia from our Henry Deke and the quiz master here at the Moda Super Series. And I'm sure that he will pose another one tonight or tomorrow. But questions now have been posed for the players because Chaz Barstow has just taken two points off Neil Duff and put himself onto six level with Sam Kankit, who can go level with Matt Clark. However, if Clark, the man unbeaten at the top of the table, 
wins this match between Superman and Super Sam, then he will put a four-point buffer between himself and the rest of the field, and that is a big gap to bridge. First leg, Sam to throw first. Sam has the darts. He's the even Jim. money shot. Superman is 8 to 11, and he is unbeaten today. Sixty. Yeah, we're flicking through our list on the teaser, the one that the, the players have provided in the practice room as well. We all work together, and we did miss a couple off that list, didn't we? Deller completely forgot about him. Did you forget that he was in the top ten or forget that he played here, or both? Forty. Top ten. But I suppose the early stages, of course, I think now on, on reflection, it may have been around... One hundred. Oh, maybe 1998 he was in the top 10. Yeah, he would have been seeded, wouldn't he, for uh, the World Championship around then. Yeah, we had Tabern. 41. Is it Shane Burgess that we... Uh, Shane Burgess, Burgess well? that was the one. Yeah, very early stages. He made multiple finals, didn't he? 60. Yeah, you were right, actually. I've just uh, done a little bit of key tapping on my information device, and Keith Jeller seeded sixth at a 1998 World Championship. Yeah, well, I, I thought that because the same year... 96! He uh, made the semi-finals, same as me in the world match play. I went down to Baxter. 137. He went down to Rod Harrington. That was at the Circus Tavern. Played in groups then, wasn't it? Groups of yes. three. And Taylor beat Priestley in the final. Just for a change. 180! Samuel Carl, 144. Another. Oh, lovely. Double 12. You Absolutely superb. Sam Kankit. Lands the first blow. The fabulous 144 checkout. Yeah, both players. Second leg match to two first. Game on. Kank it with a 15 dart hold who pins it. Not his highest finish of the week, but his other one had a four on, didn't it? The 154. We've been here, though, before, one haven't we? Yeah. <laughs> we? We've read the script. <laughs> and Matt Clark has as well. Surely Superman. Top Trump's Super Sam. 99. Don't mind the nickname, though. It's a it's an improvement on those that just sort of add, add a Y to the end of the name. Yeah, that's... Yeah, that, that does me. And my, my, one of my favourites is Mark Frost, Frosty the Throwman. 97. Yep, up there. It's creative, isn't it? Yeah, as is that of Matt Clark, if you know the story. Yeah. 140. Maybe that's another question for another day. Yeah. Best nicknames? Yeah. 122. There's actually two ferrets in the world of darts, isn't there? There's, uh, of course, Johnny Clayton. And there's a, Carl, 142. a player who has appeared on the European Tour a couple of times, nicknamed the Sweet Ferret. Oh, I didn't know that. I wonder which players have the most nicknames. It's got to be James Wade. Up there, yeah. What's he had then? He's had the 009. Yeah. Gladiator at yeah. one point. Obviously the machine. 47. Sam McCarr, 164. Gary Anderson's had a couple as well, hasn't he? Yeah, the Flying Scotsman now. Dream Boy. Dream Boy, yeah. 64. <laughs> Mike McCarr, 95. He didn't like that at all. <laughs> right, 95 for Clark. 100 a more favourable shot in many ways, but he could start on the ball here. And he does. And rightly so. Well, he's going to get a dart at some kind of target. It is going to be the ball, and he's got a nice little 
fence next to it to bounce off. And he's, he's used that perfectly. Line. Feathered Mark flew on. the flight into the bullseye. And Clark squares it up at one apiece. They like Sam to throw first. I hear Henry do that one. Feathered through the flight. Well, it did squeak 58. through, didn't it? Yeah. Both players with big finishes. Both players hitting 15 darters. Again, people think about those shots, and yes, you do see quick players take them out, but because Matt Clark is deliberate in anything he does... 60. He stepped to one side to just get the angle right, and it didn't affect his rhythm. Yeah, it just it just looks more dramatic, doesn't it? Mm. Just that that waiting, one the anticipation. Well, it's one of the disadvantages of being a, a super fast player, isn't it? That you just throw at that, and the likelihood is you'd be so accurate in terms of following the first start, you probably hit it, and it's pot luck whether it bounces in or bounces out yeah well that was pinpoint accuracy from Clark and he's on maximum points today some people just seem to take to life at the Super Series like yep. ducks to water it's only I believe it's only his third week here, this. His winning week, his Champions Week, and here he's again winning every match. 59. I think he approaches it the right way. He, he, he breaks it down. It's, it's five individual matches. It's like, 45. It's like playing five county games all on one day, and it seems to have the, the right kind of mentality. And as we've already said, it, it just doesn't give anything away. Ninety-six. I can't get still in with a good shout of regaining the lead here, especially now he's found a treble. One hundred and thirty-one. The only thing that can stop him is Matt Clark responding to that one-four-four he faced with a one-four-six of his own. And we haven't seen a dart missed at a double yet in this game. Doesn't get a, a double after a promising first. He liked it so much he stayed there to leave double 13, but Some all he can do is lay up. That is a, a way away. Double 10. And he bounced it off the barrel. See the step from Sam? 30. But he's gone too far, Mario and now 36. Clark has him at his mercy. Yeah, break a throw opportunity as well. Really take absolute control. Game shot on the third leg. That Clark. is exactly what he does. Clinical Clark. Hundred percent on the doubles. Well, we've seen. Fourth leg match to throw first. Gary Stafford, of course, goes through the card on the doubles. Four out of four. Can Matt Clark go through the card? In terms of players, yeah, he's been mid eighties average, hasn't he, in most of his matches as well. This is. Potentially going to be his best performance of the day. Just the right time. He's actually got better, really, as the day's gone on. First match was 85. 43. Second match slumped to 82. Third match when he beat Neil Duff, back up to 85. And then just shy of 90 in his win over Chaz Barstow. And in this one, Matt Clark averaging 94 100. and change. He has been the, well, he's just been the most solid, reliable player 45. today. Hence why it's top of the table. Well, it'd be good to maybe grab a chat with Matt either tomorrow or pre-finals night. Assuming he gets there, which I think is a pretty safe assumption. <laughs> But uh, just about how he how he feels here. Yeah, and, uh, and, and like I say, uh, his, his approach. Because he's not a player who's... Yeah, we mentioned he's won titles, challenged to a titles, WDF, BDO titles. 
Not a player who's won masses and masses of tournaments in his career. So 40. it's a rare feeling. I mean, look, in most darts events, the only way that you go full day winning every match is if you end up with a trophy 26. at the end of the day. Board management is just so good. One hundred and thirty-seven example there. Eighty after fifteen. This is looking like sixty. Matthew O'Connor eighty. Clark is going to complete the perfect day of darts. Very nearly had the perfect leg earlier. That would have been a real fitting moment for this birthday week. What a present it would have been for us here at the Super 16. Series. Neil Duff. Still time. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe, just maybe, we'll get it in the showpiece match on Saturday. Oh, 47. Talent on show. 20. Wouldn't surprise me. Double 10 then for Matt Clark for 3 1. Split there. 15. And gone two for double four. Yeah, and could have even thought, you know what? Forget this for a game of soldiers. I'm just going to bust it. Even though it was an inviting guide, that's probably what lured five. him in. You could have, five. like you said, last start in one or just bust and go back to double ten. But if he was going to split, he would have, as you suggested, done it with a second dart. Danger of that was leaving double one. He might do here if he goes inside. What's always that feeling? Samuel that you just Carl, 135. Don't want to Interesting insight, maybe into some, the mindset of Matt there. Because when he missed those darts at double, he went back and cleaned his glasses. It was almost 70. as if to say, well, Matt, you're a car well I'm brilliant. I can't miss. There must be something wrong. They had a. They've had a smudge on the lens. Ooh. He is in the madhouse. No score. Samuel Carr, 65. One leg can change everything, you know. And Matt Clark, who has been brilliant all day, dominant all day, has found himself here. 45. Matt Carr, Still on double four. two after 27 darts. And if he loses this leg, look, the glasses are off now. I have something in his eye. Yeah, well, he was on, he was on double ten, and Sam Kankit was back on two twenty. No, two six seven. The leg. No mistake mind. this time. Well, that's ruined the average. Not that he will particularly care about that. Yeah, it was going to be his best performance. It's now going to be his worst. Yeah, and that's what Good one leg can do in this short first. format. Game on. But he won't care. All it's about is a win, and he's got four of them, and is looking set to make it five. One hundred. Chris Mason departs the commentary box to head up to chew the fat with. Henry Russell, Peter Deacon. 140. And reflect on the day's play. He thinks it's all over. Eighty five. One hundred and forty. But maybe Sam Kankit has got other ideas. One 
Well, what on earth has happened to Matt Clark? He was absolutely flying. Mid 90s average. Samuel Carr, as Mace mentioned. And then it all started to go wrong in that previous leg when he got down to a double. Doesn't have to go for this, has gone for it. 90. Yeah, 16 dart are in the first leg. 15 darts to get down to a double from there. 100. Samuel Carr, 30. And he's thrown 24 more darts since then, Matt Clark. Eventually hitting the double two. 15. But still not on a finish. After a dozen in leg five, and just maybe now he's hoping that what happened to him happens to Kankit here and the door opens. 100. Samuel Carr, 16. Miles away. Game shot on the fifth leg. Sam Kankit. Now. He closes the gap. Remember, in a match, that if he wins, we'll see him eliminate the gap completely. Six in fact, match to throw first. Game on. If Kankit can turn this around, he would be level on points and leg difference with Matt Clark come the end of the day. They'd both be on Easy. eight and plus eight. Charles Barstow sitting in third spot, poised a charge tomorrow on six. Neil Duff really needs a winning day. He's on four and you can rule out Nelson and Stafford realistically. Two points apiece. Can it though against the throw. 44. Firing in his first maxi of the match. Fifty nine. Ninety seven. A little look of concern on the face of Matt Clark as he threw those darts. It's the first real expression of any kind today. Eighty two. Two trebles will put him on a finish first, but this is his throw. You might actually now make Kankit favourite to win this darts match because it's going to be hard for Clark to find two trebles from there, and he's not going to, so it's six from 180. The break and force 59. a decider in which he would have the darts. One hundred. Should be enough. Should get a dart a double at the very least on return. And all Matt Clark can do is try to pile on the pressure. One hundred and forty. Capital P pressure from Clark. Double ten. Oh, that could be a problem. The way it's stood in the board. Matt Urquhart, 81. And now Clark looking to showcase that killer instinct that he's had all day. Treble 19, the first port of call. And that gives him two at double 12. Double six. 69. Samuel Urquhart, 10. And it's two darts missed to complete the clean sweep. Game shot on the and it's another clean Sam of the Kankit. glasses for Clark, who can't believe what he's seeing, can't believe what he's witnessing. Nobody has got this close to Superman today, but Sam Kankit, if he wins like this Sam leg, first, game on. in which he throws first, will go level at the top of the table with the Modus Super Series 2 runner-up. Eighty-five. Thought Mace might have come back by now, but no. Be 
area switching. 139. Did not want to risk one on the floor. Forty six. Forty five. One hundred and eighty. What a time for Matt Clark to pounce. This is second one eighty of the contest. Contest which has seen both players miss eleven darts at double. You get the feeling. That this is going to be a nail biter. 39. When they get to finishing range. Clark is there, but only just. And that is a real slip. And now Sam slips. 26. Oh dear, oh dear. Matt, your car 151. Well, the door was open. And Kankit just fell flat on his face and hit the doormat. Fifty-seven. It remains Sunday open. Car 155. It's become a really nervy end. These are the two players that have been the best in the group. Suddenly, the pressure of the moment is weighing Mario heavy Khan, on the shoulders of the duo. Clark has his chance. Maybe a bullseye start this. It is. And that's the same dart. It's almost the same dart that we saw him earlier utilised to hit the ball. Had no thought of the treble 19 at all. But this 53. time, Samuel Carr, it's a disastrous attempt at the bullseye that could be punished. Needs a treble. Fails to find it. So Matt Clark will 52. have more match darts. Samuel Carr, 41. Double sixteen. Game shot on and the match. Clinical Clapper. Clark cleans up on day one of Group C. He goes through the card, enjoying a perfect day, enduring a difficult end to that day in a really error-strewn battle with Sam Kanker, who could have joined him at the top of the table, but it was Clark who ground out the win as he's done all throughout the day, and he makes it five from five. Mason is upstairs with Henry. Yeah, thank you very much, Chris. Five from five, a perfect day for Superman as he gets the better of Super Sam, but only just. Yeah, I think they both hit the uh, fatigue brick wall there a little bit, but uh, yeah, fair play to Matt Clark. He was probably the most consistent player throughout the day, if you take away the average in the, in, the, in the final game. But again, that was a bit of fatigue and more about the pressure of making it five out of five. One foot in mm. Saturday night's uh, final, probably two wins tomorrow be enough, 14 points. There's some players where certain formats suit them and it feels like this one suits Matt Clark. Why do you think that's that? I don't know, a very experienced county player and, uh, and just a very experienced player all round. And I think he has the, the right kind of mentality for it. He just breaks it down into five individual matches. You can tell he gives nothing away. He would make a very good poker player because you don't get a read off of him, whether it's positive or negative. Uh, and I just think he, uh, I think he handles the pressure a little bit better. And he's got a, a very methodical but consistent, reliable style. Well, let's have a look then at the table then, at the halfway point of Group C. As you say, Matt Clark, the man in front. But when you look at the three players just below, Kenkit and Barstow, both on six points. But you cannot rule out Neil Duff on four. No, I mean, we've seen today, there was, there was some, some great moments in there. It hit a ton of 180s today. But, yeah, it just wasn't his day. It didn't click at the right times. And 
Well, that performance from, from John Nelson, a personal best for him, great to see because he was one of our qualifiers who did struggle over the, the first three days of Group A. So, yeah, that, that was important and great to see Gary Stafford get a win as well where he has had a nightmare on the outer ring all week and then produces four out of four. Uh, and that's just uh, our sport summed up in one, I think. That is darts, isn't it? And Neil Duff running into one. And the one that he really did run into was Chaz Barca, who put in the performance of the week against the reigning WDF world champion, an average in excess of 105. And that is what Chaz Barca is best can do. Yeah, and had he hit that double 12 for a start, it'd have been around 112. Mm -hmm. Uh, that just shows you kind of level he was playing at. And I think, I think Neil Duff had his highest average of the day in that match, 98-plus. Mm -hmm. uh, um, but that sort of summed up Neil's day, really. He just, he just kept walking into them. And, uh, yeah, I mean, everybody's got some positives to take from today. And tomorrow's going to be tough for them all because although Matt Clark's on 10 points, he's, he's far from safe yet. Like I say, I think maybe one or two wins and he should get at least top spot or runner-up. Is this where you mentioned the Scott Walters paradox now? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Well, yeah, that just shows you. He, he did the same, didn't he? Five from five and then, incredibly, didn't even qualify. Oh, well, we're moving on to tonight's action. We're really looking forward to Group B this evening. It's going to see Richie House and Lee Cox come back into action. We're going to see Johnny Haynes back at the Super Seeds. He won a week last time out, didn't he, as well? The Dazzler, Dell fit and fresh from Perfectly, where we saw some really good stuff, especially against Leonard Gates. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm excited to see Johnny Haynes. Johnny Haynes is, is very similar to Matt Clark in the way he approaches mm -hmm. it. He just, again, breaks it down into to five individual matches. The table will, will take care of itself. But, yeah, I was impressed with Lee Cox. That's probably the best I've seen him yeah. play uh, over the entirety of a group. Uh, and Richie Harrison looks as, as solid as ever. So, again, that's going to be tough to narrow five into three. Shall we go and get a bit of food? And some sleep. And some sleep. I think that is the plan. And whilst we're away, we're going to be back at 10 o'clock this evening, but whilst you've got a few hours free, why don't you head over to the Motor Super Series YouTube channel where we have an exclusive chat with Paul Nixon as part of our second birthday celebrations here at the Live Lounge. But we're going to be back at 10pm this evening for the beginning of the action from Group B, where it's Superman who stands at the top of the Group C table.